Okay, folks. Once again, back at the brush. With the morning coffee. And off to a little bit later start than normal. Maybe about an hour later. Mainly due because I had coffee last night painting. And I, I would say last night's was really successful session. <clears throat> and I knew I needed to stop because it was getting late. And, um, and I did. But I had had coffee. And um, as what frequently happens when I have coffee late, I go to sleep. But then I wake up a couple of hours later and stay awake for an hour, which is what happened last night. So I was up from, I think, 1 to 2 o'clock, something like that. But I'm pretty, you know, so I woke up later. You know, it happened. I slept through my alarm on purpose. Okay. Varangian Guard. Still missing some black spots on here. So let's, let's fix those and... We'll get all up in the Varangian Guard here. Maybe proto Varangian Guard. Not the guys that you normally think of with bearded axes or the long axes are particularly known for. Mold check. No sign of it, no smell. No. This uh, is definitely in the mold, better in the mold department. I would have already gotten mold with the other one. Have a big old mushroom growing in there. All right, let's get a relatively... non-detail brush and let's get some of these black spots take a look at them and then we'll get to going on them we're going to assembly line paint these guys as much as i hate saying that and these guys tended to be pretty colorful as far as i've seen them in illustrations Now these guys will all have, by order of decree, the same shield pattern. Um, they literally have the exact same equipment as each other. And these are actually um, Byzantine spearmen <coughs> from Old Glory. <coughs> and they came with a mixture of shields. They came with a mixture of shields, and I specifically picked guys all that had round shields because the Varangian guards tended to like to use round shields. So I wanted spearmen with round shields because uh, according to the Book of Barker, I think it was in the Book of Barker, it was somewhere I found out that these guys did not use axes as their primary weapon until 1075 and since that is already in the next period over the com the Comnenan army period we're going to make these guys spearmen good morning harvey So that's why I picked the folks that I picked to be these four. So they're going to be colorful-ish. I mean, I mean ish because there's not a whole lot of them to be colorful on. I'm not going to paint their helmets. I'm not going to paint their armor. I mean, their armor is going to be what it is. So there's a little bit of 
cloth on their pants showing and, and their undershirt. So we might make that kind of bright. But we're going to uh, do the shield first because the shield is the shield is what it is. So I don't want to pick something that is not going to go with the shield. For instance, the pants or the shirt, neither one of them is going to be red because the shield is basically red with a black emblem on it. And uh, we're going to do some kind of a crow. And hopefully I like how it looks. Unfortunately, the damn boss is right in the middle of it. And I, I am not a fan of that design when there's a boss in the middle of a... It's different if it's in the middle of a pattern, but if it's in the middle of like a, a an animal, I don't know that I've ever done that before. And even when it's done right, I don't like how it looks. And I don't want to cut the boss off, which I guess I could do. But um, then people would be like, now, there's no way he'd be able to hold on to that shield without a boss on it. But, 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 but there's illustrations of people that did it on there and it looks good. <laughs> Either you've gone deaf or there's something wrong with the audio. Well, maybe you need to... Let me... No, I didn't touch the audio from yesterday. I didn't use the computer. How about, is that better? I did have audio on the computer, but I didn't even use it. I didn't turn anything. The mic's on. See if it's better. I'm not gonna say, can you hear me now? Damn it, I said it! <laughs> is that why people wear headphones when they record things? So they can hear themselves? I don't have any. I don't feel the need to buy any. And they make my ears hot. My ears already get red when they're not supposed to. You left the rebooted or I don't know. All right. So we've got leather armor. That may actually be leather and not metal. His chest portion. Let me take a look. Let me take a look at a couple things before I get started on the wrong foot. Not that it makes a huge difference, but I like to get things right when I can. Do that with uh, yeah, those little scale things look like they're metal. Good, that's what I like to hear. That's what I like to hear. I don't, I don't know that I did anything, but I think in the past, there's a volume here for the, for the sound to come in through the computer. And um, when you plug in the mic, it defaults to nothing. And I think there was still something on. I don't know what it was. Great job getting Byzantine finished before Historicon. Well, they're not done yet. Well, technically, they can be paid. and they're not done. I, I've got a, I've got a base. Uh, I got to put the, I got a base. Um, six figures, so two stands and paint three. Uh, it's nothing, you know. That's it's a piece of cake. 
you know. So uh, I think I can get these guys done as well, especially with this basing material that's quick. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. It's going to take. I shouldn't even say that. I'm going to be honest with you because that sounds like at some points I'm not honest. <laughs> and I'm many things, but dishonest is or a liar isn't one of them. Um, I, I told somebody a long time ago. I forgot what it was. We were having some kind of an argument. And he's like, well, you're an asshole. I said, well, I am. And, and I'm a lot better. Than, and at least I'm not a liar like you. But um, it's going to take forever. It's going to take forever to base this stand because they're so jammed in there. And um, we're going to have to do a little bit of a time, almost kind of how we did uh, in multiple stages with like a chariot. You going to a Historicon? There will be. They'll, they'll be done unless I have some massive heart attack or something. And I'm not uh, really planning on one of those. Honestly, I'm not, I'm not that excited to go. I know that sounds stupid, but... Um, I want to see the vendor hall, but I don't need to buy anything. Um, I don't need to game. I game enough. I passed up gaming last night. Just to be here. <laughs> that was the right move. Um, I ended up just creating more work for myself. Now I got a video to edit on top of everything else. I got little awards to put together. I already printed them out. I did all. I did. I did so many things, so much earlier than I ever did, than I've ever done before. So, and it's actually. I'm not that stressed out. See, not stressed out at all. Yeah, I got half of mine. Not even bring these guys. Do all this work and they show up and get a bloody nose. <laughs> you know, I don't care about winning or losing. I just don't want an army I spent a couple hundred hours painting to be losers. That's really what it boils down to. I mean, I'm up to, I don't know what, 920 games lost or something like that. Yes, I've won more, thankfully. Um, but not a lot more, like 1,100. So I don't care about losing another game. I just don't want to, you know, find out, oh, I got, got another army of Turks that, you know, lose four games for every one they win. So, just a little demoralizing for them. No, I should, I'm on this kick. Let's just go ahead and do the helmet. Let's get in the habit of doing everything that we have in that color. I don't normally don't operate that way. But, we need to be, Efficient, I guess. I hope I don't regret this. Painting the tip before the rest of it. I know I'm going to find the vendor hall disappointing. Every year I've gone, which honestly is probably a good thing. I'm not tempted by shit. Um, every year I've gone, there's less and less vendors of that I'm interested in. More of them that do fantasy. I get it. Fantasy people, fantasy stuff sells better. Whatever. Scales I'm not interested in. You know, you can have all kinds of stuff in 28 millimeter. I won't take a look at it.
or tens. I think somebody asked me one time, if I didn't do 15s, what scale would I do? And obviously, I don't make 20s and, and any kind of variety for this. So I'd probably do 6. Although the problem with 6 is they don't, there's not that much variety in, in between the figures. And, you know, if you're doing Roman Legionnaires, it doesn't really matter. But if you're doing, you know, Feudal Knights, it does. And the goop process would, I would hate to do that. You know, the part where you're doing the flocking. Tens is an interesting compromise, but hardly anybody makes them. Twenty eights, I don't dislike. It just I don't have time to. I don't have. It just take. We're going to take way too long to paint. And that's for you know DVA, which doesn't have a lot of figures. And I actually had a lot of fun playing at the. There's a twenty five millimeter event. At the last show that Marty put on, I had a lot of fun in it. It was kind of nice to stand up and. And be like physically active while you were playing the game, you know, rolling the dice like you're at a craps table. I had a lot of fun. Maybe I annoyed other people, whatever. I'm just being me. You should know that now. I had a lot of fun with it, but I just don't have the time to to paint them. And you know, I'm not gonna be like, well, you know, you can use a dip method or something. So why would I paint bigger troops shittle more shit more shittily invent my own words while I'm at it then I do 15s it doesn't make any sense so a 28 mil figure probably take 10 hours to paint each if I'm lucky I just don't have that I don't have that time And wouldn't play DBA with it. If I'm going to take longer to paint figures, the game's going to have more detail and last longer, so that the figures could stay longer on the on the you know on the board. So some people would think, why don't I always do this with assembly line? I, I don't like picking up and putting the figure down. I fear it's it's kind of fumbly. You know, and I'm, I scuff up the end of the figure every time I do that. You know, because you know, I wouldn't say I have fat fingers, but I have fingers. My fat's not in my fingers. <laughs> I am looking forward to staying at the venue, though. Not that it was much of a problem not staying at the venue, but... Let's hope the rooms are half as nice as the convention area. sure that I'm not getting some messages lost on this. 
Just receive your order from Museum Miniatures. Dave included a sample of his Z-Range Normans, an excellent mini in scale with his other stuff. Yeah, um... I only have one gripe with the with museum. Really, only one. Um, I'm not even gonna, I'm not even going to call it a gripe. Historically, he ships faster than anybody else, even faster than Essex. Him and Essex are the two fastest shippers, without a doubt. It's not even close, and that's even across the pond. But his new figures. Had I never seen him in person, I would have never bought any. Because they just look, they look like they're proportioned. They're in the wrong proportion. They're even more exaggerated than Warhammer figures. And they're squat looking. And the faces are very, have very dominant features and all look the same. Um... But that's just a factor of the 3D rendering. When you get them, they look great. Uh, Joe has them, and I was surprised, like, these are the same figures? So I understand why he's got to put the 3D renderings there, but it'd be nice if he took pictures of the actual figure after it was cast so people could see what they're really getting because you're showing a picture of what you're, you're not getting that. I mean, maybe somebody's out there is like, ooh, I like these heroic looking Neanderthal guys with big knuckles and stuff. And then they get him like, oh, they look like regular chaps. What happened, you know? But they really do very, look very good. And I don't mind a one piece casting on the same horse. Um, in some ways I prefer that. It's just one other thing I gotta do. Um, But given, with that said, is if I'm using a figure manufacturer that comes with different horses, I'm not going to go out of my way and make all the horses look the same. That would be, that'd be silly. But I wish you would put pictures of the, of the finished stuff on there. Good morning, Dirk. Good evening to you. So that's, is that a gripe? Not really. Not really. I don't like his older stuff, and some of his older stuff is quirky looking. Paints just fine. You know? Most people's figures paint up pretty good. If you just, if you put some care into them. I went over to the game the other day and Randy was there. No, no, for Randy to be on today. We'll talk. We'll talk about him. So maybe he'll show up. We'll hit a ringing in his ears and shows up. You keep me entertained whilst doing late night work. The curse of being twenty four seven on call this week. Are you being entertained? Yes, you're being entertained. I can be loud. There's like nobody here. Actually, I'm always loud. I'm always myself, even when, um, even when the girls are here. Maybe that's not a good thing, but you know what you're getting anyways. Um, so Randy was looking at my Irish up close, and he was in awe with them. I'm, I'm not trying to toot my own horn. I just wanted to point out that you look at, uh, and I was pointing out, he's like, well, who's the manufacturer of these? And for the most part, and we're talking about the Irish foot, maybe 90% of them are Essex, and he couldn't believe it. And it's true, because Essex figures, you look at them, and they don't, it's not that they look bad. They look uninspiring. Like, I'm not like, oh, I can't wait to paint these guys. They look kind of lackluster. Um, between, my biggest gripe with them really is the poses. Um, but they've gotten better. Uh, you can mix and if you mix and match their stuff in with each other, you'll get a good mix. But but they're really good little castings. They have good faces to paint. Um, some of their faces are similar, not always the same, but they're similar. They, they paint up really well. And um, even though some of them are a little in the short-legged department, 
you know, maybe they wear like a 25 pant, 25 length pant. I don't know what that is in centimeter for you people, people that. Yeah, I, I'm okay with a metric system, but don't tell me what metric clothes are because I got no experience there. Um, we're going to do, we won't do every color. We'll bring these up all the way by the each. And then we'll put the figure down. But most people's figures are paint up okay. I've painted some irregular, which I think are towards the bottom in quality wise of figures. They paint up fine. Um, so I'm not on this quest to like, hey, get the best figures out there because I've got lots of figures that I've picked up at, at flea markets that I'm perfectly happy to paint. Or as you call them across the pond, bring and buys. And there's nothing wrong with them. And I don't mind having extras because I like to mix them in. Uh, if I do move on the Hun project, I've got all the Huns I could possibly need from Marty. But they're all from one manufacturer. So I've got Light Horse. I've got maybe four poses of Light Horse. And I have to do... Probably 10 stands of them all told so I want more variety because that's a troop type I mean the Huns are gonna look boring they're gonna look peasant like so you got to make them interesting in that you know you, you make them rustic some of their clothing rustic colored but not all the same rustic not like you know oh well they're all wearing some kind of off-white that's just not gonna work you know um, and you don't want them all in one pose because that's boring too so you know a mixture between the two things so I'm gonna pick up some if they don't have them there at the show, which there's no reason why they would, but I will probably, and if by the end of the show I decide that I'm going to go to the Huns next, I am probably on the way back going to order the um, the Forged and Battle figures. Three packs of them. Probably the Cavalry and the two, light, uh, the two Light Horse with the mixed weapons. And mix them in. I'm not going to use just those. I'm going to mix in some of the Gladiators as well. And um, the Gladiator figure, the... The figures that used to be gladi that are now gladiator that used to be black hat that used to be gladiator, that used to be what metal magic or whatever, yeah, those guys. Um, morning, Mr. Ben. The one piece casting of the Arab mounting commander from Alternative Armies is unique. He is. He's leading off the side, pointing his sword. Still like the sculpt though. Um, I got one of them from a bring and buy. And his sword was broken. But yeah, it's a, it's a unique sculpt. And they're quirky looking. But that's okay. You know, they actually paint up really well. I know which one you're talking about. They have some, they have some Arab figures that are particularly cool. Um, they got one guy that's... The guy that's got the Ardaga shield with the, with the big sword on his one shoulder. I think he looks pretty cool. Um... A couple of the um, Murabit looking uh, figures look pretty cool as well. The only problem with a lot of older figures, you say lack of pose is fine for regimented Roman legionnaires, though. Absolutely. Person have a soft spot for old TTG figures and, of course, Mike models game. Models. Okay. Uh, we love old minis. Thankfully, I have a source for cheap old minis. Might. Share them with you one day when I might keep it. Until then, I might keep it a wargaming secret. Okay. I like them. I think that they need loving. Um, and I've gotten them because other people want the latest and the greatest. Well, I'm not going to throw away all the old stuff that I have. I'm going to mix them in. Now, if I was doing World War II... That wouldn't necessarily work because you don't want you know you don't want to equip a squad with M1 Garands that are in toddler size or ones that are made for giants. You know you've got you know the weapons are the weapon, so you got to be a little bit more careful if you're doing World War II stuff or I guess other periods as well.
But oh, there's one manufacturer that I've never painted their stuff. They showed up on the scene too late. So I'm not going to give you any names, but you'll know who it is if I've talked about them. I've got nothing against them other than um, irony and coincidences. And I hate irony and coincidences more than communists. Because you know what? I don't have to deal with communists on a daily basis. Thankfully. And I got to deal with irony and coincidences all the time at work, at, you know, on a daily basis. So anything that brings that into my personal life really pisses me off. You know, the kind of stuff where it's like you call somebody, they're not there. You leave a message. You go, like, well, let me go ahead and pee. Then they call you back. You li they leave you a message. So then you call them right back. They're not available again. Shit like that happens constantly. They don't have that in the afterlife, do they? Because, you know, that's might be looking forward to it then. I hate that. Um, but anyhow, so what are the what is the what is the irony and coincidences? There are several armies, I want to say three, that I did, and just when I was done, this particular manufacturer came out with figures for the range. I believe it was three. And in jest, I'm like, I ought to just build something that they make already so they can't pull that stunt on me. I know they're not doing it for me, but it's just, you know, coincidences. You know, coincidences happen all the time. Sometimes they're to your benefit. Sometimes they're to your detriment. Die rolling. When you roll a one in your combat, makes a big difference. Ah, shit, I rolled it again when my opponent rolled a six. But somehow I don't feel that rolling badly in a game is really frustrating. I still have this idea that I roll better than, than most people. I know it's just bullshit, but my brother won't play me any dice games. He says that I do something with the dice. Yeah, you know what I do? I don't let the die get in my head. <laughs> so... Anyhow, three times this particular company came out with figures that if they would have come out with them six months earlier, I would have bought some of them and mixed them in my army. It's not like I would have just dropped everything and just used their stuff, you know? So I'm like, well, I guess I'll never paint their figures. But you just got to be happy with what you have and not with what you don't have. Because you could buy the nicest figures and some new company comes in and makes the same thing. And like, damn it, I wish I would have known I would have built theirs. Just got to be happy and move on. That's the only gripe that I don't like about these stands. Is once you put the guys on there, that's the guys that are stuck on there unless you rebase. If you were doing something like um, Lion Rampant, where you have individual figures, you could just be like, hey, let me just buy some of these figures and paint six of them. And then, oh, another four came from this other one. Let me get four from them and mix them into your unit is like that. That's the only gripe that I have about the, the, the groupings of the figures. Once they're together, they're together, and that's it. Now, I like them as a unit. It's, it's less fiddly than pulling all the guys out of your case kind of thing, but that's the downside to it, you know? That's the downside to it. Ah, oh, shit. I picked up something. No big deal. Ah, oh, shit, because this never happens. Rarely. I say you sometimes things have to go wrong for you so you understand how to deal with them. Mr. Stellar, welcome. That guy's just stellar. <laughs> Speaking of stellar. Remind me of one of the things that I don't like this morning. Let's see if I can. Let's see if I can pull this off. I don't know if I can pull this off. And that is. Come on. Come on, phone. Wake up. Okay. First of all, you're not bright enough. 
All right, let's brighten you up. All right, now let's see if I, we're using this as a camera, but let's see if I have, I bet I don't. Maybe I do. Yeah, we're not going to be able to do that. So I don't listen to the news for obvious reasons. But I do get my news like when I go in the morning and I turn on the internet and then something comes up on the page and I'll scroll through some things. And if it's current events, I usually just go, yeah, that's what you want me to think. And move on to something else. <clears throat> and... Um, There was this article today, and there, there's almost one of these articles about every day. These people that have a hard-on for, for space. No other way to say it other than that. And, this, and the subject line was something along the lines of, signal emitting a billion light years from this object sending this pulsing thing. I'm like, okay, first of all, you can't grasp that. That's not graspable, graspable, nor is it relevant. Let's assume that you're correct, which is really unlikely, in my opinion. Just, you know, just rolling the dice, that's probably not what it is, okay? Um, a billion light years. So it got sent out before humans were even around on this planet you know and it you just don't have a concept of it so they're probably getting all there oh, is it aliens you can't even tell me what the freaking shields were were painted of, of of you know of a roman unit that was the other day you know cgi stars yeah people are obsessed with that i'm like we find new shit at the bottom of our oceans all the time. That, that kind of bullshit, I mean, a billion light years. It, the speed of light, I mean, it, it's incomprehensible, you know. If that's true and accurate, it's not comprehensible, nor relevant. You know, and they, it, it's like some, and, and, you know, they'll do articles like this all the time. And I'm not an anti-science person, but I'm anti, stop scaring people. You know, do you have, people already have enough problems, especially with the inflation. Um, people have enough problems. Why are you creating more problems for them? Now, it doesn't work on some people like me. But it works on a lot of people. And stop scaring folks, damn it. You know, there'll be an article like Meteor comes close to Earth. Well, if, if a meteor's gonna hit next week, we all need to be fucking worried about it, right? But you read the article and there's like a, oh, there's a, it's, it's going to barely enter the solar system uh, between Uranus and M Neptune. And there's only like a 0.1% chance of it hitting anything. I'm like, well, why even bother telling people about that? So some people are fed by all that fear. I just basically become agnostic. I'm like, you lie enough to me enough times, I'm not going to listen to what you say. It's like the guy, you know, the guy that cried wolf. Oh, wolf, wolf. You look, no wolf there. All right. Wolf, wolf. Oh, what? No wolf there. Then the next time the wolf's really there, and I let him get eaten. You know? I'm just not going to listen to your nonsense. That shit doesn't work on me. So, that's why I don't listen to the media. I don't care what they tell me. I don't want them to tell me the news that I want to hear. Just tell me the truth. Just tell me what's going on, and they can't do that anymore. It's physically impossible for him. Well, 
I'm not going to listen to you then. Okay, you're share the secret. Keep Wargaming is the place. Oh, I've ordered from him before. He's awesome. And he's quick. And his website's kind of... Um, I've picked up stuff from him before. Great service, although they charge shipping for each item. Then refund you back down to the actual posted charge. Plus, plus 50 pence handling. No, well, I've had good experiences with him. People in the UK... Um, people in the UK are a lot better about shipping your product out than people in the United States. Now, not Amazon, okay? Amazon is, I don't know what they do. They use aliens, slaves, time travel. I don't know what they do, okay? Um, but um, I've had good experiences with Keep. What, did I, what was it that I ordered from him? Maybe all the DBM books way back when. And I've ordered figures from him before. Yeah, he seems like he's a nice guy. I don't know. Ships products to you quickly. The UK people are better. They are. Yeah, call him like I see him. Except that one guy. And we had one of those guys here too in the United States. The guy that the guy that won't the guy that won't take credit. And I don't care what his excuse is. Oh, he's old. I've been able to take you could email me PayPal for like 30 years now. I'm not asking you for money. I'm just saying, and I don't know how to run a business. So you know how to do all the tax crap and all the stuff that is overwhelming to somebody like me to try to start a business. That's the hard shit. And you can't take payment over the phone, electronic payment. You know, people want, you need to make it easy for people to give you their money. And then your part of the deal is you start working on getting the order out to them. Not, well, we'll see when we get here, you know. Um, Maybe some people, maybe, maybe things, maybe it's a front for something else. Um, as several people that I know that, that think that the dollar stores are a front for Chinese spies, but that's a bit too much, but that doesn't make any sense either. Well, now they're a dollar 20, they're a dollar 25, you know, inflation, a dollar 25. But if I don't see how they make any money and I don't, oh, volume, they still have to pay, pay rent for the place, which you know, is significant. They still have to pay people the minimum wage, which, you know, has gone up. <clears throat> I just, maybe they get the stuff for free. I have no idea. Storm of Steel. Keep an GZG. I don't know who that is. I think some war gamers have discovered wormhole technology. I've heard of GZG orders turning up 48 hours after an order was placed with standard shipping. Uh, Brookhurst Hobbies used to do that in the 90s. I would order on Monday morning, which they weren't even open yet because they're in California. And um, I'd get it on Thursday. <laughs> freaking crazy. It's just freaking crazy. So I used to say, is, you know, you get things before you even order them. Now, you know, I haven't ordered from them in a long time, but they used to carry, they used to import so many things. And then what they imported um, has kind of diminished. Plus, I'm not doing the 20 millimeter World War II stuff anymore. Um, plus, their inventory was wrong lots of times. Um, but I'm not used to having bad service from folks. Um, there was one. There was one company that's not around anymore, or maybe they are, but they're in. They're called something else. And I'll say that because I suspect that that's what the case is because, you know, when you have a wargaming business that has a lot of products in a, in a particular town and then they disappear and another one appears in the same town, I find it suspect. But this particular company was the importer of 
a figure line that I hold very is very dear to me and looks like it's no longer going to be available anymore. But at the time, they were the importer of them. So I asked them if they had these items in stock and the guy on the phone was like, I don't know, and wasn't going to check or anything. Well, I'm like, well, I don't want to order. I want to order 12, 12 packs and I don't want to find out that you only have two and you're going to ship them to me and it's the same shipping cost. That's not very smart, but you know, I'm not used to getting bad service from people. So I'm, I don't, you go to stores now, you know, it used to be, I worked retail. Retail is an okay job. I mean, it's not, you know, nothing to retire off of, but it's not like you're working with food. I think retail is just fine. I've, I've worked it many years when I was younger, you know, I think we all have to some degree. And when you work at a grocery when you work at a grocery store or or you know at a store or something like that and somebody asks you a question, do you have this? You go and check, right? It makes your day go by quicker. What's the best thing you can do at work? It feels like you come in and then you go out, oh man, my eight hour day or my ten hour day seemed like it was an hour and a half long. Perfect, right? Everybody wins. You get paid for ten and it feels like an hour and a half. Everybody wins. But these guys now, they don't know anything. They're on their phone surfing. They can't be, you know, it's okay to screw around a little bit, but, you know. So, you know. We were talking about you on the latest Yorkshire Gamers podcast. Sean Clark was talking about your DBA games. <gasps> Yorkshire Gamers, are you, got, are you the guys that do the, uh, the big, the, the, all the World War I ships with the wavy waters and 2400 scale. I surf a lot. I think Yorkshire, okay. I would think that Yorkshire would be near Yorkshire. Oh, wait a second. Is it called Yorkshire? If it's Yorkshire, shouldn't Yorkshire be said Yorkshire? Maybe it is. Which is why I need more coffee. <laughs> Excellent. If it is, then I've seen some of your... Um, I've... Somebody like just has tons of 24, like the dude Jutland in one to one scale. That'd be pretty cool. P&T at Keyboard Gaming have been in business for decades. have picked up a massive amount of figures and rules over the years. It's, it's strange. You go on their website and their website's actually, it looks antiquated, but it's actually pretty good. I'm talking about Keep. But it looked like they carry figures, but they were almost like being discontinued. And I don't know if... I just got the wrong impression. I thought they were getting out of the figures, but if you guys are still buying figures for them, good. I, I don't want people that do a good job to go out of business. You know, I'm wondering why people that do a shitty job are still in business. Yeah, it's Ken, Ken Riley. And it's a play on the Yorkshire accent. Yorkshire. Yorkshire, okay. <laughs> you guys have a lot of accents that... I would have trouble, um, it's not the accents, it's the word omissions. And there's bad accents in this country. Um, there's no doubt about it. Um, as a matter of fact, I was on my Facebook feed the other, the other day, I think two days ago, and you get videos recommended to you. Um, and I occasionally like watching videos on cars or firearms or something like that. And um, I get this video recommended to me and there's this girl that's shooting guns and I'm like, oh, she's pretty attractive. So I'm like, start watching her video. I mean, she's really, really cute. And, but as soon as she opens her mouth, it's horrible. It is absolutely horrible. Um, and I don't know where the hell she was from. She was deep south, deep south. And um, I don't have a problem with the southern accent. I am from the south, but I am not southern. Um, which is probably why most of you can understand what I'm saying. But this poor girl had the worst accent I have heard in a long time. So there are some... <laughs> it was so bad. I showed it to my daughter and she's like, oh, yeah. But, you know, it's it's the pronunciation and she omits words. She omits words. And so. Yeah, I watched him. I watched a video a few months ago about 
Top 10 easiest to understand accents in the United Kingdom. Maybe it was just Britain. I miss say that all the time. I mean one and I mean the other one. I know what the difference is. I know what all the flags are. I just, I don't use it on a daily basis. Um, and after you got the number two, it started going downhills fast, you know. The queen's not fun at parties, but she knows how to speak clearly. Well, she may be fun at parties, but not any party I'd want to go to. Um, and then the Cockney one, I can understand that maybe it's just exposure. Maybe that's what it is. We're just not exposed to stuff like that. I mean, um, can't think of what his name is now. The Cockney guy, the guy that, the guy that everybody likes. Um, I've seen a lot of movies with him in them and maybe I've gotten used to how he speaks. And his is more pronounced in some movies than others. Um, God, what's his name? It's going to be a sad day when he passes, too. I can't think of him. But after that, man, it just started going downhill. Like, I, I couldn't keep up. I'm missing half the content, you know? Yorkshire is how the locals pronounce Yorkshire. Great blog and photos. Saw his game at Fiasco in Leeds last year, which is a great name for a convention. Fiasco. I like that. I gotta look this up. I'm gonna drive myself up the wall. I keep, we always talk about actors and stuff like that, but I can never remember them because it's not like I think about them on a daily basis. I don't watch that many movies. Why is this? Um. So what I'm used to watching, and I've watched a lot of English television, Michael Caine. Michael Caine is who I'm talking about. You know, Michael Caine has a pretty heavy accent, but he's relatively easy to understand. But I think it's just exposure. You know, I think it's just exposure to that. You know, if you drop me in the middle of where you guys live, I, you know, it's going to be sink or swim. We're going to communicate with each other or we're not. But, you know, when I'm not used to that type of interaction. We got to keep things simple for. You got to remember, we some of us pick up all our English accents from um, people that speak very clearly, like David Niven or Roger Moore. Those two in particular, you understand every single thing they say. And then. And then other people mumble and garble and, and, and you know, there's, there's many people that do that here. It's not a UK thing. So. I got to watch that, that movie that both of those guys are in. I never see them. It's two of my favorite actors growing up as a kid. And um, I've never seen that one where they're in the, is it a U-boat hunter or something like that? I forget what it's called, but it's like from 1981 or something like that. I've never seen it. I don't know how the hell I missed it. Probably never showed it on TV. But a World War II movie with those two guys in it, I haven't seen it. Pretty crazy. Yes, Michael Caine is a delay. Michael Caine's accent is Cockney, yes. Yeah, and, and I would think that it would be difficult to understand, but man, compared to some of the other ones, it's, and it's just exposure. There's lots of Cockney things that... Hmm. 
that you can encounter. I don't know whether that's, you know, it's probably the equivalent of the New York accent. I can't stand the New York accent. I'm tired of watching movies with people like De Niro and stuff in it. That's not America. I've been to New York once, I think. That is a different world. I do not lay claim to it. You guys want it back? You can have it. <laughs> oh, man. That is a different world. As much as it pains to say it, I'd take California over New York. I don't know, earthquakes? I can't deal with earthquakes, but... New York is just weird. Anyhow. So, Varangian Guard. Plugging away here. I need to find a... A new spot here. But I've gotten better service from people in the UK than the US. Maybe old school way of doing things. I don't know. Yeah, I couldn't believe these guys. Well, I don't know if we have it in stock. Well, why don't you check? Well, you can order them and find out. Go away. Not places out of business. Or they got rebranded as something else. I, I really don't know. But you got to make it easy for people to spend their money so they don't change your mind, right? What if you have a second thought? Ah, I, don't, I don't really need all that stuff. No, you want people to buy more than what they want. We don't want New York. Give it back to the Dutch. That's right. <laughs> That's a conflict I don't know jack shit about. The conflict between... Um, Britain and Holland. I don't know shit about it. Was there any land combat or was it just basically all on the high seas? And that was basically, um, that was after Cromwell, right? So that's when um, the king came back and he was pro-Catholic and the Dutch were basically Protestant. Yeah, the Dutch do a terrible job of being Catholic. <laughs> As my ancestors found out. Well, you know, we weren't exactly nice folks about it either. Um, you're ducking out now. Enjoy the stream. Good luck with the painting. All right, thanks for stopping by and um, say hi to Yaksha for me. Right back. Let me get me a. Let me get me a Coke. No more coffee. Yes, I did just assume his gender. Look, I've looked at my stats. I think I may have had one woman look at one video. I'm not anti-woman, but my stuff just doesn't, doesn't appeal to women. Just like when I go to the fabric store, I'm the only straight dude there. It's okay. I mean, it's not really their realm. You know, it's not really the, I'm out of my normal realm, you know. It's just how it is, you know. Women are generally not into historical subjects. I can't even get my wife to watch anything historical at all. My daughter is much better, but I get it, whatever. 
I'm the exception to the rule too. I don't watch anything sports. You know, maybe if there's sports with like prettier girls in it, I might watch it, but maybe my wife wouldn't like that. But anyhow, um, this guy had, uh, speaking of mentioning my, my name and other things, this guy had done a synopsis of DBA, I want to say in the last couple months or whatever. And he quoted all these other people. And I, when I saw that he was quoting a lot of other people, I'm like, oh, shit. I hope he doesn't bring me up. Because I don't mind being quoted, but I don't like quotes out of context. And I don't like all, a lot of interesting, useful things you say. And then they bring up something that anybody could have said. Um, and um, luckily he didn't mention me. It's like perfect because I'm not interested in... I'm not interested in being famous. I'm just doing my thing. You guys, we're, we're just hanging out. Um, maybe I'll motivate some of you guys to continue on this wonderful hobby that this is. And I don't necessarily mean DBA. I mean wargaming. I mean miniature painting. Um, it's, it's a wonderful, wonderful thing that I don't have a chance to talk to anybody about it throughout my life, really, um, other than here, so... Okay, how to do much with a merchant mercantile trade. Okay. And the Dutch lost, I think. I'll have to look into that. See, I'll get things like that. I'm like, huh, I wonder what about that. Dutch Marines are still proud of their battle honor Tilbury for the storming of that fort. Hmm. Welcome, Jules. Um, but that's the problem with quotes is they'll get taken out of context or in my case you know I might have something more interesting to provide and you prove you, you, you know it was just little snippets and stuff so and it was a long article and, and I hate writing I really do hate writing uh, I get a writer's block it's not that I can't write it's just that to write effectively, it create you need a lot of. Um, I feel like I need a lot of um, laying things out and organizing, and I don't feel like I want to do that. Um, I, I don't think it's worth it, so I'm not a writer. Nor do I want to be. And then you have no idea if people are reading the stuff that you wrote. Like, if you go on Blogger and stuff like that, you'll see how many hits a unit has, and a, a, a site has. And I've been to some sites that are just phenomenally well done, and they have hardly any views. And I'm like, that's just not getting, that's just not getting your, your message out or your, your interest out. I think the videos are a lot, a lot better, even though they may not have a, a lot of um, video content per se, but at least it's something you can listen to um, while you're doing other things. I mean, you guys may not be working on hobby stuff at all. You may be f uh, folding laundry, for instance, and I've done this. I've done housework and have my headphones on and, and maybe I'm not watching the person paint, or but I'm listening to the, to the back and forth. Um, it's like talk radio with all, without all the politics. So I enjoy that. And, you know, when you're talking about painting and figures and stuff like that, I mean, I love talking about figures and surfing and who makes that and what do they look like and, oh, that guy's wearing this and, okay, how much do they cost? I love all that stuff, you know. That goes on deaf ears when it comes to Mitch because he doesn't paint. He doesn't buy unpainted things. He doesn't get excited about lead and how he's going to paint them. He's not a painter, you know. But he's not a bad sportsman, which is probably more important because I know some of you guys have really bad experiences with bad sportsmanship. People throwing dice and getting pissed and like, uh, I, I don't have those gaming experiences and wouldn't put up with them, honestly. This is a, um, a zone free of that. This is escapism to, to a land where there are no such problems.
you know, if this hobby is making you angry, you need to find another hobby. This is therapy for some of us. You know, I don't mean like I need to go to therapy. I just mean it's it's all everything's good here. It's all good. You know, you guys pay twenty eight. I don't. That's cool. I don't have to convert anybody. You like basing in white? That's nice. Do it. You don't have to do things my way. I don't make any money off of it. Even if I did, I'm not into controlling people. You guys should know that. I also don't want to be controlled. You guys like Alexander better than Hannibal as a general? That's fine. Go ahead and be wrong. <laughs> oh, man. And, and I'll... And I'll close that with, and I don't even like the Carthaginians. I don't. <laughs> I do not like a society that sacrifices its own children. I would, not, I would not do well there. I would not participate. There were several Anglo-Dutch wars, and the Dutch won several land and naval battles. Not sure of the overall results of the wars. Angry, badass war games in, in pink trousers. What, is that a club that they all wear pink trousers? I'm not wearing pink trousers. That's a bit much. And I got pretty thick skin. You said pink trousers. I thought, well, maybe that's something that you said. Maybe should everybody should go and, and game like that. I had a pictures of this one guy that was um, it's this one guy that I know went to a um, an event at a hobby store, and this guy was wearing a hammer and sickle shirt. And I wouldn't do well in that situation. And I don't think he was wearing it because he was playing the Russians, the Soviets. I wouldn't say anything to him, but maybe I, maybe I didn't have to make fun of him, whatever. Just like I don't, I don't think it's in good form to wear one of these shirts with all the German units and stuff. I mean, the Germans were freaking masters of propaganda. Think about it. I mean, that's what they were good at. But I'm not, I'm not wearing a. 12th SS Hitler Jugend emblem on my shirt. It sends a wrong message, you know. And I don't even have anybody who was a veteran in my family that was a veteran of, of a foreign war. It was all pointless as 1688 William of Orange became king of England, Scotland, and Ireland. Yeah. Well, war for the most part is pointless. But it's fun to game. Nobody gets hurt here. So, you know, like if I'm, when I used to build models, I got really annoyed that, you know, you'd build, I like World War II stuff. That's what I used to build. And build a Messerschmitt and it didn't come with a swastika on it. I'm not a Nazi, but I want to freaking build it accurately. Now, I don't want to walk around with a freaking swastika on it every day. It sends the wrong message to the extreme. But I want to build the plane accurately. And I'm not just building German planes, you know. They need to fight somebody, you know. The good guys need bad guys to fight, you know? But I don't know, in all my years of gaming that I've encountered...
One person, yeah, maybe one person. Maybe one person was borderline. Um, that was really a... Was into supremacy stuff. Maybe, maybe one person. I don't know. They didn't affect me, so... I thought for the longest time there wasn't any war gaming in Germany, and and you know I could I could get that I get I get why that would be frowned upon, you know. But One person in many years. I'm going to say maybe one person. They just didn't. They enjoyed playing the Germans just maybe a little too much. I find the Soviets are a lot of fun to play. I pretty much enjoy making, playing everybody, except Americans. I don't really like playing Americans. I'm already American. We're just not exciting enough. Sorry. And I don't do modern stuff, so. So after this is done, then we're probably going to do the spears. And what I've found is I, I tend to like spears that are lighter color than darker. It just seems like they stand out a little better. Oh, let me check one thing. Let me check one thing and make sure I don't have. I don't, okay. I need to do that from time to time. There's my wife who's, who's out of town. She's like, I tried calling you. I said, I'm online. I wouldn't know that you were there. So what if I had an emergency? Well, did you have one? No. Oh, okay. Well, you know I'm going to be online as much as I can to get this stuff done, especially if you're not around. Don't have an emergency while I'm gone. Okay, Harvey, have a good day. See you tomorrow morning. Harvey is an early morning person, if I remember correctly, or, or a mid-afternoon. Mid-afternoon? Early afternoon. Early afternoon. I'm going to try to... Get this done because um, my brother's in town, and we've been kind of trying to do a trying to do because we haven't been very successful trying to do a bond marathon. He lives out of town, and we're working our way through the movies in order. I've seen all of them except like three, and um, most of, most of them only once, and just kind of walking our way through them, and and we've got a ways to go. 
And maybe we can knock out two tonight. Because we're never going to get around to finishing all of them, so. Um, grew up with those films. I like them. Yeah, they're hokey. Whatever. They are what they are. They're a lot better than superhero movies. A lot better than superhero movies. I think we're only four in or whatever. It's taking a long while. They'll do something like, hey, they're all free on Amazon. Well, they don't tell you they're only free for like two weeks. Well, how the hell am I going to watch them all in two weeks? You know, binge watch them? And I don't want to watch them alone. It's funny though, we've, all, we've had the same impression on all of them, everyone we've watched. We'd be like, oh, this one's better than I expected, or oh man, we fell asleep in that one, so. If you want to see some controversial shit, go join a, a James Bond forum on Facebook. Holy shit, there's some opinionated people on there. <laughs> Just some crazy stuff on there. Crazy stuff on there. Plus there's trolls, which I honestly forget that exist. I just don't even think of that somebody's hobby would be just to cause trouble. Like do something constructive. Like what are you doing? Just stirring the pot? Like that's a waste of your life, dude. Or a lady. <laughs> James Bond forum sounds like hell. Well, it's, you know, it's... This is my favorite movie. No, it's not. That guy's crap. He ruined the franchise. You know, it's just... It's just crazy. You know. And everybody's got their favorite actor and everybody's got their favorite movies and you're not going to convince somebody otherwise and that's just perfectly fine. You know? And I haven't seen the latest movie. I haven't seen three movies. And the three movies I haven't seen are Quantum of Solace, the newest one, and one other one. And it's got to be... No, it may be four movies. I've never seen GoldenEye. And I didn't avoid it. I just didn't never saw GoldenEye. Which, just about everybody unanimously agrees, that's the best Brosnan film. Just haven't seen it. Um, I think I've seen very, 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 very small parts of it. I think I've seen both of the Dalton films. I may not have seen... I've seen them, but I've seen them only once. So maybe I'm missing one other one. Anyhow, I've seen all the other ones. So maybe not. Maybe won't remember them, but I've seen all the other ones. And... Um, Yeah, there's definitely some troublemakers in there. For sure, for sure. You're not going to change somebody's opinion of it. It's like if somebody says, oh, you know, you know, my favorite movie. If they say, oh, it's a horrible movie. I would be like, you're freaking crazy. I, and I don't care if you don't like Raiders of the Lost Ark. Raiders of the Lost Ark is my favorite movie. And I was fortunate enough to watch in the movie theater as a kid. I 
And I haven't seen it that many times. Maybe five times. I just don't really watch stuff. Everybody's entitled to their opinion. They watch it for different reasons. Spear. Let's pick a base color. Go with the English uniform. I didn't think there was that much controversy in the Bond movies. To be honest with you, I was just a fan of I'm just a fan of the of the venue. Genre, sorry, venue genre. Don't pay attention to what I say. <laughs> I mean A and say B sometimes, unfortunately. Oh, let's not use this brush. This one's too good. This one hasn't been ruined yet. It hasn't been violated enough. But everybody has their particular things about films and they may not be, you know, what most people agree with. As I like to say, I'm the only person that doesn't like the show Firefly. I just didn't care for it. It's funny. It's actually another, another thing that I am like the only person. That's not true. Some of you guys on here have told me that Harvey may actually be one of them. That they did not like this other movie that everybody seems to like. Everybody that I everybody that I grew up with seemed to like it, and I absolutely hate this movie. Actually, there's one other movie. I just thought about another movie. <laughs> just have a channel. Movies I don't like. And it's okay if you like them. I mean, it's not like we're going to send you to the concentration camp or anything. You know, it's, I don't I don't like I don't care for them. And I don't understand why there's a huge following of them. But anyhow, um, is um, well, I was going to say there's there's two there's two things I just I just realized that they're they're opposites. I don't like them. Well, one of them is I like the cast. I don't like the story. And the other one is I don't like the I don't like the cast. And I don't like the cast in Firefly. I don't, I don't like Fillion. I don't like him. He just doesn't do it for me. Uh, it just seems way. I don't care for him. But the movie that everybody raves about, the World War II everybody raves about, that everybody likes except me, is Kelly's Heroes. And I, I like the cast in Kelly's Heroes. No problem with any of them that I can think of. I don't think there's anybody there that I, that I dislike as an actor. I just, that whole hippie vibe, and I, I know that was dumb for whatever reason. It just does not work with World War II at all. Um... Didn't care for Firefly either. What was it? I mean, I like I like the prostitute. She's cute, but that doesn't take you for the whole show. I mean, you know.
The other movie that everybody seems to like except me is Spaceballs. I couldn't watch it. I couldn't watch it. Couldn't watch it. And I'm a fan of the Star Wars stuff, and maybe that's why I didn't like it. I'm a fan of the, you know, the, the three that I grew up with. I'm a fan because it's so much better than anything else science fiction out there as, as far as I'm concerned. Not that it's maybe all that great in and of itself. You know, and I grew up with it. I was a kid when that stuff came out. And it's not a science fiction storyline. It's almost more medieval than anything else. Ian is the Ian is one of the Firefly... I, I, yeah, I don't understand what the big thing is. You love Guns and Averone. Dude, I grew up on that movie. That is, that is the World War II movie that I watched more than any other movie growing up. Um, yeah. That's, that's the one, man. That little elevator goes down. Is it going to hit this time? Nope, it stopped just short. Yep. Guns and Averone, yeah, baby. That and Battle of the Bulge. As inaccurate as it is, as inaccurate as it is, you know. At least they didn't do like Big Red One and use an Israeli tank for a German tank. That's wrong on so many levels. That's wrong on so many levels to use a Super Sherman for a Nazi tank. That's just bad form. That's all I can remember about the movie. <laughs> Guns and Navarone, yeah. I used to have that little... Remember the little dance that they're doing in the Greek in the in a little Greek town? I used to have that little tune stuck in my head for many years. Not because I liked it, just because it was catchy. Yeah, and they used an, an M8 armored car, right? It was all uh, painted up like it was a German armored car. I frequently watched it and missed the first part of the movie. So I never saw what's his name, like where he couldn't get off the cliff where he got captured or whatever. Uh, for whatever reason, I'd be like, oh, it's on, and it was already going. So I never saw whatever that guy's name, Anthony, whatever his name is, never, never really factored in the movie. You know, the guy who was the commander. When Eagles Dare is my guilty pleasure movie. Um, I've seen it a couple times. Those two are a weird combination together. Um, I like Clint Eastwood, but I don't think he was cast well for that. He's he's he has such a um, he's so much the opposite of. Um, and here we go again. I can't think of what is. I can't think of the Welsh guy. Jesus. I don't think about these folks all day long. It was okay. It was okay. I prefer um, The Eagle Has Landed. You love the Panzerlide song in the Battle of the Bulge. It's excellent. I, I think I couldn't believe Robert Shaw wasn't blonde in real life. I think he was cast exceptionally well in that role. Exceptionally well in that look. The rest of the movie could be garbage, whatever you want. I think he freaking makes that movie. Um, that was your... Perfect German Nazi type cast guy. You know, his... Joachim Piper type of 
character. It's the Panzer Lied song is not as catchy as the song at the beginning of Cross of Iron. That song is extremely catchy. I mean, I haven't heard it in years and I still have it stuck in my head. Um, Clint slaughtering half the German army always cheers me up if I'm feeling down. Oh, I got to see it again. Richard Burton. There we go. Clint was great in Kelly's Heroes, though. I just hated, I hated the hippie plot. I hated the whole hippie vibe that thing. That movie had. I'll watch it again. I, I do need to watch it. If it comes on for free, I'll, I'll watch it again. And um, yeah, I like all the cast. I don't have a problem with the cast in it. Never liked it. Now, as opposed to the silly thing, Hogan's Heroes, I grew up watching that with my dad. So, um, yeah, it's, it's hokey and bullshit, but it's, you know, I have fond memories of it watching with my dad. You know, I knew enough about World War II that I found it funny. You got you to gotta know about World War II and how it's everything's, you know, exaggerated and shit like that. Um, I think my daughter would probably like it too, but... Some of those old shows don't translate really well because they seem they have a, they're they're kind of really slow in parts. For anyone watching the UK, I've just finished Weather Warnings for Extreme Heat from London up to the Midlands. Problem I have with Battle of Bulge is when they get to the climatic battle, the entire dense forest is mysteriously vanished. Yeah. Well, it's what happens when you film in Spain. I think they did a fair enough job. Other than using actual Shermans, I think using an M47 for the German tanks was at least decent. At least they have a turret overhang. You know? And I don't, I don't like Henry Fonda at all. I don't like Henry Fonda one bit. But there's many actors of that generation that I don't really care for. I don't care for Bogart. Again, maybe it's just both of those guys are too New York for me. Can, can seriously, can we give it back to the Dutch? Hey Dirk, will you take um will you take New York back? Will your people take New York back? <laughs> huh. London hits a hundred and two. What the what? That seems a bit hot for London. I really don't pay attention to current events. And the perfect example... I was looking at something yesterday. I know what it was. I was researching um, a battle with the Huns and the Chinese, right? So I forget which one it was, what the name of it was. It. Um, I'm sure I'll go more into detail when I'm taking notes and stuff like that. But it said this was this city and, and you know, it's located near such and such this day. So I'm like, well, let's see what the terrain looks like. And look at it on the map. And here it is. And it's between... It's near the Aral Sea. So I'll go on my map and I'm like, I can't find the Aral Sea. And I'm like, unbeknownst to me in the last 20 years, it's dried up and doesn't exist. And I'm like, what the, f where, what? What? I mean, 
News to me. There's no more RLC. Because the, Russian, the Russians diverted the rivers. or That's why it doesn't make any sense to me. Why, get, why even get gas from Russia? Because you know that they're not going to... We People do environmentally insensitive things everywhere. But I can't think of them doing them more insensitive than, say, somewhere like that. You know? There's no more RLC? What the hell? I mean, that's a big place. That's like, you know, drying up... I don't know, what is it? Half the size of Florida? That's a big freaking place. Yep, yeah, provided all the New Yorkers leave. Nobody wants those assholes. <laughs> oh, man. That's not America. That's not America. <laughs> I got one guy that games with a relatively relatively often he's from New York and he's he's all right he's he's all right his his problem is he's you know you just have to understand that you know you no longer live there we're not all out to get you okay you can like unclench a little bit and not have so much like angst in you but he's an okay guy uh, yeah, I I kind of make it a point to to get him to convert I don't know maybe if he lived like three more lifetimes it'd be okay but He's an okay guy with us. You could just... he. I think he had bad gaming experiences with the people that he used to game with up there. But we're not, we're not that way. You know, but he's okay. He's an interesting anomaly of different folks, and I like him. But... Um, I don't think he's been on... I don't think he's been on video. That he tra did travel up to uh, our little game day that we had here in town last year. Yeah, it's this whole attitude, and maybe it's in other big cities around the world where you just if you're fighting everybody for no reason. And it's okay to get into altercations with people that have done you wrong, but. Just because there's lots of people doesn't mean every, all of a sudden everybody's like nasty to each other for no reason. You know, I, I don't want to live in an, a place like that. Oh, look at that. I stopped using that brush and I'm back to using it again. Well, F it. I'm going to, oh, I know why. Because I'm wanting to get did some of the detailed stuff on there. Let's see. Do I like that color for this beer? Yeah, I like that color for this beer. That's good. I like that color for the spirit. Man, we got to. So that's what I say. You know, people are, lots of people like to pick on the French, for instance. And when they've never even met a French person. And I'm saying that's like judging everybody that lives in, it's the same thing. It's like judging all Americans by people that live in New York. Like judging everybody in in France by people that live in Paris. I don't think it's very fair, you know. Um, there's there's bad people everywhere. There's decent people everywhere. So, um, I asked one friend of mine, he, would, he couldn't stand the French and never met one. I'm like, that's a bit unfair, don't you think? And just look at it that way. I mean, why would you want everybody to judge Americans like people are from New York? Or, you know, or any other big city. Or any podunk city, too, you know? We ain't all rednecks.
This seems like it's taking forever, but I'm not used to painting four guys at a time, but I'm sure it's more efficient. I just don't like to pick up and put down the figure. So the compromise is I'm at least, I'm finishing the spear, whatever it is, um, are worse Californians. Are Californians worse than New York? I would say they're not um, because um, there's, I think there's places in California that um, are more normal than New York. I don't know. I wouldn't want to live in either place. Californians at least don't have a terrible accent. They could blend in, you wouldn't even know. I'm out with the earthquakes though, forget that. That's... I went to the Bay Area like two years they had that big quake with a with a bridge pancaked and people were trapped for day no nope nope that's i'm not claustrophobic but uh that would i could make an exception for that He lived in California for six months and hated it. I've been there once and it went terrible for us. My dad is like the only Cuban. I'm, yes, there are other people, but he's like the only Cuban that never lived in Miami. Thank God. And, um, and Miami's beautiful, but you have that New York attitude with people, it's bad. It's really, really bad. And his attitude like, you don't use turn signals because then people know you're getting over and they won't let you in. But what kind of a society is that where people behave that way? You know, I don't want to live in a place like that. Um, and he went to California, would have been 1960 or whatever. And you'd always like, oh, California is great. California was the best thing. It was the best thing. Maybe when you went, well, we went. 25 years later and he couldn't recognize it and we had a terrible time I think I'd like the weather like in the Bay Area I think I think the weather would be I would really enjoy that. It tends to be cold and wet. Perfect. I like that. But everything else, you can have it. You can have it. Shit, I don't remember if I took my medicine this morning. Oh, yeah, I did. I didn't. All right, let's go ahead and take it. So I don't turn into a leper. Everybody's got something. I'm glad mine's not life threatening. Everybody's got something. Guess we're just using the shitty one to put the, the main layer down.
Yeah, when you go on vacation somewhere, you don't expect things to go wrong. You go through a lot of trouble and cost for a vacation to be a positive experience. And when you go somewhere on vacation and there's bullshit complications, whatever, if you're going to somewhere that's not like, you know, Afghanistan, you know, you don't expect to have any problems, you know. You don't go to, you know, California on vacation and expect to be everything to be trouble. Work calls done, back to painting, excellent. Oh, you're on call. I'm like, man, you're working in the middle of it? No, on a call. No. At least you can wear whatever you want to wear, if you want to wear something. I'm just wearing my favorite Mitch attire. No shoes. I guess what's weird about Mitch not wearing shoes is he doesn't wear shoes. Like, I don't wear shoes at home, but in my own home. And, you know, my floors are clean. Um, and my feet are closed in all day long at work. But Mitch's shed is like in a shed, so he's like got to cross his yard and stuff like barefoot. And I'm like, yeah, I don't go outside barefoot unless I'm at the beach or the pool deck. That's it, you know, but I don't wear shoes in the house. I don't wear shoes in my own house, let's put it that way. And I've actually gotten away from wearing flip-flops. I like wearing flip-flops because they keep my feet cool. But man, I just feel like they destroy your heels. Just completely. You would think it would be better for you. It just, like, it just squeezes every little bit of moisture out of your heels. And they start cracking. So I'm like, eh. I'm trying to not wear them as much as I used to. I, I like to wear them because, you know, Monday through Friday, my feet are enclosed and work shoes all day long. And my feet are usually hot. Not right now. Right now they're freezing and I love it. The girls aren't home. I'm not turning the temperature up. It's going to stay at 72 all day long. And I'm surprised that people actually, yeah, I turn it down to like 60. How? You'd freeze the freaking unit outside. Forget cost. Let's say the cost is free. You can't do it. You'll freeze your AC unit out there. So we never go below 72 and don't run the heater in the winter time. The heater's evil. All right, I'm going to keep putting stuff down if I'm not. And love to, I love to put things in my mouth, whatever the hell that means. So let's go with gum. Talking doesn't help either. Oh, we already did the base color on this guy? All right. So see after the spear. Let's do the faces. Those I'm doing by the each. And then once these four guys, it's the easy part is, because the other three guys, I'll paint them individually. And they have a lot of character, the next three guys. 
So I'm actually looking forward to, blow, to, to blowing. Look, I'm already talking about the guy that's blowing his horn. I'm already excited about the guy blowing. You know. That's going to be a tight stand. Not a lot of breathing room there. So I was looking for something the other day. I realized I got a lot of stuff. Well, we all do. But I got a lot of stuff that I didn't know that I had for terrain that I haven't painted. Like hills and shit. Because I need to take an inventory of that before I go. I also need to take an inventory of go through my Mongol thing. And there's some bowmen that I need to use for Huns. See how many of those guys do I have. Just stuff so I don't accidentally buy a pack of something that I don't need. And if I get around to it. And there's going to be some downtime because once these guys are done painting, uh, you know, I got to spray them so I can't do anything with them. So that, that's the time to do it. Not to do it now, but after the guys are painted. So it'll probably be sometime tomorrow when we do that. Maybe we'll do that live and go through my pile of lead. I really don't have that many figures compared to some of you guys. I don't really mean that as a, I gotta catch up. I don't feel bad about having as much unpainted lead because I know that I've gotten a lot of it has either been given to me, I've inherited it, or I bought it so, it's so cheap at the bring and buy, I wasn't gonna leave it there. And I've used it a lot, and it comes in handy, you know, when you, oh, I need one figure for, oh, this guy will work. It really does come in handy. But it is in a tub that is very difficult to pick up without hurting your back. So if I didn't have anything to do, I'd probably organize it a little bit better, but... I kind of know where my stuff isn't. So. Like it's not in that bag. That's all successors. Don't look for Chinese figures in there. You're not going to find any. Facial time. How many folks we got on the journey? Seven. That's not bad. Good morning to all of you lurkers. All right. Uh, I know that the area, yeah, it's over there. It's dried up again. Some of that, and then this sunny skin tone. And of course, Mr. White's there to accompany us. And I need to use little boy's room. I'll be right back.
just go to the store and pick up some more of the base color for Sam, but I think I can get by. I don't really want to take away from my uh, take away from my painting time to go do that. I need to get these guys to the point where they're finished as quick as possible because I'm going to have to seal them and such. All right. Um, faces. We'll start with this guy. And these are all slightly different poses from each other. Very slightly different poses. Um, we're out of the magical drippings. Very often to be magical drippings. I think all these dumbasses have freaking eyeballs, too. Bulging eyeballs. Oh, I may accidentally forget to paint them. Oh, well. I don't know who the hell this sculptor is, for old glory. I don't dislike their figures, but this guy really likes cheekbones. This is a cheek bony guy. High cheekbones, I should say. Not a fan. I saw an article one time that apparently that's what most men like, women with high cheekbones. I don't. Not my thing. Yeah, we're going to have to paint his eyes. Let's just, let's just do it. Shit, you know what? We're going to do it. We're going to do them all at once. So we got the white flowing right. So let's go ahead and get all of the figures up to this level. And then we'll do all, all eight eyes. Well, these are a lot better than the cheekbones on FAA. The FAA cheekbones just drive, would drive me mad. It's hard to believe that anybody could sculpt this in this scale. It's really freaking crazy. I just thought there was, they made it big and there was some kind of ma magic reducer and it would reduce things down to a size. I don't know. Especially with like GHQ. GHQ miniatures, which I grew up painting, I'm like, that can't be actual size that they're doing it in.
I need to ask Mitch, what's his favorite? What's the army that he dreads the most? And if he doesn't have one, then that's fine. He doesn't have to have one, but, you know, maybe name something that, you know, when I bring out whatever army, he's like, oh, those bastards again. I wonder what it is. I wonder if there's an army of mine that it gives him fits. It's not the Ottomans, that's for sure. I really like that army. And, they, and I suck with them. And they roll badly for me. And, you know, all of the above. But I still like them. So, it's more important that I like how they look. My poor, my poor, poor Irish. Went from a stellar 8-2 and two to an 8-6 and six the other night. I, I don't even want to take them out again. I don't want them to get any worse. I really, really like that army. Yeah. So what happens when you play the Irish not having whiskey? You lose all four games. Just rolled terrible. I just rolled way too many ones at the wrong time and just died in combat. Eh, shit happens. And it didn't help. I was playing against two players. Two different players that brought the goddamn Numidians. The goddamn Numidians, yeah. Hate those guys. I said, I ought to build them and run them into the ground. <laughs> My Numidians have never won a game. 24 and 0, you know, 0 and 24. Yes. Well, the whole point is you got to play like you want to win. You can't just like do stupid stuff. Stack four deep or something like that, you know. My Ottomans at least are interesting. I don't find the Numidians interesting at all. I mean, if I was going to paint Numidians, I'd rather paint early Libyans. Right? Same time period. We don't have them. And I can make fun of them wearing cock socks. Which is the whole point in building that army. I should build them, shouldn't I? The old glory guys aren't bad, actually. They got a lot of pretty decent personality.
it's more important to me that I like how they look. And I enjoy painting them more than however they're, whatever their performance is. It's just nice to have both, but it's okay. Once I realized eyes aren't, don't really work trying to put a dot in the center, just put a vertical line. They started looking in a way that I was a lot happier with how they were turning out. Check on one thing. No, nope, nothing yet. Make sure the wife doesn't call for something. But now that I know how to disconnect the phone, use it as a phone, and then come back on. That was handy. All right, let's do the rest of these guys' faces and hands and such. So we're going to start off from this one we used specifically for the eyes. Let's. Leave that one alone. It's kind of nice when the figures have their, their hands stuck behind a shield. That's one less hand you have to paint. And not, not that I necessarily dislike painting hands, but it's one less thing to do.
light comes through this, it gets too annoying. We might have to take a break and um, cut some of the wards or something like that. Do something Historicon related. But just wait. I think it's like 30 minutes or something like that where the problem arises with the light coming through. Mitch's dead army for him is the Anglo-Saxons that are all warband. But, you know, that kind of goes without saying. They're all damn warband. Ooh, I just realized these guys, I could have a blonde guy in here. We got blonde people. Woohoo! And they are Vikings. Ish. Viking-esque. Could even have a redhead. Their hair is covered, so it'd just be the beard. Okay, this guy's done. Of course, the part I'm really looking forward to is doing the shield. That's the part I really, really enjoy. Let's do the same same pose or the similar pose next. Yeah, this is taking a while, but when I'm done with it, most of the figures for the command post are done because there's seven, and this is four of them, so. You can have Warband in the Huns. I can. And Bo. I can. But I'm going to build the... Um, the Shang Nu... And the Heftalites first. And then work my way over to Attila. Sounds like a disease. What's wrong with that guy? Oh, he's got a bad case of the Heftalites. <laughs> right back and get some water. Bad case of the heftalites. Yeah, um, I think eight light horse is the is the core to everything. Shang Nu is what two twenty one something like that. Nope. That Chang and 
T Chinese. Or later than that. That's a good list. Tian and Kunming Chinese Army. Cab General. A solid blade or a light horse or a fast warband. Two more solid blades, six solid pikes, a fast crossbow or a, or a skirmisher, and another skirmisher. Aggression zero, tropical. That's a good freaking army. Oh well. 238. So Shang Nu is a cav general. Two more cav, eight light horse. And then a light horse or a saloy. Ooh, they can have a saloy that's foot archers. All right, let's do a little exercise. It's getting into transom light 30 anyways. Let's do a little exercise here. Let's put this off for a little bit. This is something I gotta do anyways. I don't want to be in the same position all freaking day long either. That's going to be, I'm going to have upper shoulder pain. Let me check one thing before I do this. Nope, no phone call. Okay, cool. All right. Let me, uh, let me grab a pen or even better, a pencil. So we've got, and I'm not interested in building the Southern Shung Nu. He has, actually has that army. And they're actually not an enemy of the, of the, uh, of the, um, the Han Chinese. Okay, so picked up one card and I got two. I just need one, damn it. Two. 38, and I like the new spelling. Shang Nu. Okay, so the Shang Nu are Cav General, two more Cav, and then eight Light Horse, and then one light horse or skirmisher. Okay. If I want, and then the Han list is 280. We go two eighty A Attila. We would have to add I got Ostrogoth Knight already. The total of five light horse archers. Okay, plus a light horse general. If I wanted all the options. And four warband. Okay. And then I have Attila with that one. Um, if I wanted to build the Saber... Saber or Sabir. 
I would need those four warband plus four four bow. So I'd have all the options for them. Heft the lights. Already have the eight core light horse. I'm not building this kyanite, whatever these are, with a with a knight gen with a with a knight and half a lump. So I wouldn't need all this stuff. I would come over here, and this would be um, two eighty. Let's cut the crap. We'll just call them white huns. White huns. Actually, it should be. H U W I T E Huns, White Huns. Um, they already have a cab general. Um, they need to have an elephant. And they would need to have two, three bow and two light horse. And then, if I wanted to build the other, because there's eight here and then two light horse, I would just need one more light horse. And I got that army done. Okay, so this breaks down kind of what I'm looking at. So you build the core here. And then you just decide, do I want to do Attila? and build these things. See, and by doing this exercise, I feel like I've got a really good idea of what everything is. So, yeah, so you build the Shang Nu, and then you build the other elements for the White Huns or Attila, depending on which way to go in. Probably the White Huns. Because the elephant in the White Huns says... It's probably not listed in here. It said like, like 10 halberdiers or something like that. Well, I'm not putting 10 halberdiers on there, but I want to see if there's any foot for the Mongols that would work. You know, as I've got some of the Mongol troops could be used for the foot. I'm not going to use Mongol horse for the, for the Hun horse. I got lots of Hun horse, but anyhow. Now I just got to remember to take this card with me. If not, I've done the exercise, so I've got a pretty good idea. Now, I've got enough stuff to do this and all these guys with the war bands also. And I've got an elephant I'm going to make. So I really just need the three, the two, three bow. I'm going to see if some of the Mongol, I have, I have some Mongol dismounted bow I could use as them. I've got these bow I can use from the actual gladiator figures, but I have exactly the amount that I need. Because um, this is 16, and I've got two packs of eight. So I just, I'd want to not touch them and use them for these guys. Because, anyhow. Anyways, that was my little exercise. So now I feel like I've got a really good grasp on, you know, what it is. So, what it is! And I'm not opposed to having a light horse commander and a cav commander. Or maybe a cav commander that is a till and a cav commander that's somebody else. You know, I don't mind painting commanders. Likewise, when I get done with these figures right here, if I paint <coughs> a blade stand of Varangian Guard and a stand of spear and two fast bows, I, I add the Comnene and A and the B list to it. So it would be smart. An intelligent person would work on that after Historicon before I jumped on the Huns. But we'll see if I'm going to be intelligent or smart. I'm a little concerned that these guys are going to get run into the ground. But they'll look good getting run into the ground. <laughs> you know, historically, these guys got their ass kicked. So that's comforting. It's comforting to use an army that are a bunch of losers. <laughs> Should 
shit, I'm laughing about stuff too. Yeah, well, I'm not like laugh track Mitch. Mitch laughs about all kinds of stuff that shouldn't be that shouldn't be laughable about. Hey, that's his thing. I don't want to change him. That's his thing. Somebody complained about him one time. I, it was on Fanaticus or uh, one of the videos that said, you do something about Mitch. He's always laughing all the time. It wasn't worded like that. It was worded in a way that it didn't sound like they were just joking. And I just responded with, he's just a funny guy. And he is. He, he's just a happy guy. He's always happy. I'm not always happy. Um... Maybe while gaming, I'm always happy, but I'm not happy all the time. I get pissed frequently, and sometimes I don't care if the world knows. But not while gaming. Gaming's all good, you know. I'm here for the challenge. If I know I'm going to win and everything, what's, what's the point in even doing it? Yeah, but Mitch is just a happy guy all the time. I've seen him pissed like twice, ever. So. Well, that was the wrong brush. You get away from me. It was this one, isn't it? I think it's this one. Off foul brush. Anybody still on? Five viewers, okay. Just busy knocking out what you're knocking out. I'm assuming pissed has a different meaning for U.S. types. Yes. It means, uh, what do you guys use that, um, a term that we don't use? It means extremely cross. <laughs> no, we never mean pissed to be drunk. Never. Never. Just like Fanny's always the backside here. Always. For you U.S. types, I bet the Canadians think the same way. I bet, I bet Canadian pissed is the same way. Yeah, pissed is just angry as shit. Fuming mad. <laughs> Fuming mad. <laughs> oh, man. I really wish QRF could get off their ass and finally go back in business because 
Man, those pre-feudal Scots, I'm going to have a fucking blast with them. It's probably too much of a blast, honestly. You guys in the UK use the C word like it's nobody's business? Or that's just uh, perception on the telly? I think it's a great word, but it's, it's, you know, it's the nuclear option. So, you know, you can't start a war just dropping nukes on people, you know? The C word. Got one show that I watch over here in the character. I think, actually, the actor's from New Zealand, if I remember correctly. The Boys and uh, Butcher. I think that the guy that plays Butcher is from New Zealand. Although, I don't know that he has a New Zealand accent. Although, I'm not sure that I know what a New Zealand accent is. There's just not enough of you guys out in the world promoting your accent for those of us that aren't from New Zealand under, to, to figure out what it is. But anyways, every other word he says is the C word. That's, it's a bit extreme to, to overuse. Uh, you know, cussing, I always think of cussing as like the exclamation point. And you can't write a whole sentence using the exclamation point behind each sentence. Behind each word, it just it just isn't right. So, you know, uh, it's like you can't type everything in caps. If you type everything in caps, um, forget people that think that you're yelling about stuff. There's no way to emphasize things when you've already overemphasized everything. You know, you can't draw attention to one word like you know, I can't believe this is the day. You know, you can't if if you capitalize everything, you can't provide emphasis on certain words. C word needs to be used for effect. Like word of power spell in D&D. Yeah. There's a place for it in, you know, and everything. The nuclear option. I particularly like it when the ladies use it. As rare as that may be. But yeah, butcher every third word is is the C word for him. Not really enjoying this season, by the way. And I'm way behind. I think I've only finished two episodes. I'm a big fan of that show. That is a funny, funny show. I guess we'll still watch that superhero show, but... I'm not watching anything else superhero-ish. It's just moronic. Um, it, they're just they're tying too many things into each other, and it, and it just like work. It's just too much work watching everything. And um, my daughter's really into them, and that's the only reason. Or she was really into them, and that's why I watched it. It was just something to watch with her, and I can she can explain to him like what's what's this guy? Oh, this is the guy that's so and so that you know. And my daughter is not really a nerdy uh, comic book person. Um, as a matter of fact, she won't go into a game store with me. She's like, Daddy, those guys are scary. I said, don't worry. They've never kissed a girl. You got nothing to worry about. So she won't, she won't go to a game store and pick up paints with me and stuff like that. She'll stay in the car. I don't blame her. Gamers are weird. You guys know. If you don't think gamers are weird, you're one of them. <laughs> It's okay to be nerdy. You don't have to be popular. I wasn't popular in school. But you got to turn that shit off when you get out in the real world, you know? You're going to scare people, you know? Okay, I'm filling in the QRF survey to tell them to get the Scots back into production ASAP. Why didn't they send me one? And I've ordered from them before. They're also asking what new figures we would be like to see to QRF's ranges. Any recommendations? Oh, I don't know. I can tell you that QRF is not going to be really popular because they're... And, and I don't mean anything bad by what I'm about to say. But they're not a, they're not, their figures aren't top tier. They aren't. Okay, I don't have a problem with that. I like them a lot. Um, I like them a lot, a lot. Yeah, make sure they get the Scots in the queue and they need to bring the Macedonians back because they have a, 
Um, they have a figure pack that has uh, some leaders in it, and I, I'm going to need that if I'm going to do some of these successor armies, which is they got a pack that what has Philip V, um, the one-eyed guy, and um, somebody else. They got three figures in that pack. So I like them. I don't want to paint figures that you see everybody painting the same figures. So for me, I'm not interested in that. Um, and, and it's not like they're bad, but they're not, you can't compare them to like forged in battle. You just can't, you know, but I don't have a problem with them. I got my, my stuff from them pretty quick. Um, they used a hard, a hard alloy, which I like. I don't like a uh, soft alloy where I have to feel like I have to replace every single spear, uh, or lance. And, um, yeah, Scots get the, get those damn pre feudal Scots so I could do them next. I mean, after the Huns. Uh, pissed meaning drunk comes from the use by shaman of fly agaric mushrooms. They would serve their pee to followers, which would make them high. Well, I'll never use that term because there's so much in there that doesn't apply to me. Um, don't, don't know that my people ever had shaman. Well, they probably, we probably all had shaman, but probably way, way back. Mushrooms? Yeah, don't do drugs. Not into wet work either. Oh, man. Pewter, there he is, Kevin. Um, Essex, for instance, still uses a softer alloy than most companies do. Now... I thought it was just the older figures. The older figures are even worse, but their their s their their alloy is is softer than most people, and I prefer it harder because it it keeps it from bending in the first place. Um, but yeah, bring back the Scots. And Tony's pissed that he didn't get a survey. <laughs> oh shit! Wrong pissed. See, I did it again. I didn't even think about it. It doesn't occur to me that it means anything else than that. I've never been across the pond. And I don't watch enough British television to pick up some of those things. I don't watch any television, really. I wonder why it doesn't show up that you're signed on there, Kevin, sometimes. Maybe it's, I don't know, maybe you've got some kind of hidden settings. So, There's a time in the U.S. that the lead miniatures were illegal, so everyone was using pewter. Well, you don't want to put them in your mouth. That's one of those things that's always going to be called pile of lead, you know? Even though the lead content might be non-existent or whatever, it's still, you know, it's going to be one of those things that's going to be very hard to get out of your vocabulary. We're used to calling them lead figures. Let me make sure I don't have...
There's a there's a guy that put on the Fanatica site. I downloaded it somewhere. I I've, I've got it. But kind of like a guide on how all the units fight. And I think I'm going to have to print one out for these guys to hand to people because a command post is pe some things people just aren't in, just not used to. You know. They're not used to fighting one, so I don't know that it's really powerful. It's kind of cool. It's a cool other other thing. We also say he's steaming to mean someone's drunk. See, and he's steaming sounds like you're about to, you know, blow a gasket because you're angry. You're painting French Napoleonic engineers. Oh my. Are the French the bad guys? And Napoleonic? I don't know. I don't think of them as... They're, I mean, they're as bad as a guy as, say, what? Alexander, right? Alexander being a warmonger going after the Persians. Are they as bad as, say, the Germans in World War I? You know? I mean, he brought about the metric system you guys love so much. <laughs> and I don't dislike the metric system. <laughs> oh. I don't like metric temperatures. I don't know what the hell I'm looking at. You know. I know how it works. Just it's useless. Anything over 45 centigrade is like worthless to talk about. You don't think he's the bad guy. Okay. I don't think he's a bad guy either. We use it that way too, which is probably why there's so many drunken brawls. Yeah. Engineers have beards and carry axes. Do they? Sounds like a prospector. You an engineer? I'm prospecting. Yeah, I don't think the um, I don't think the French are, are the bad guys. It's just you know one of those things that. I don't think there's any bad guys in World War One. I. I just think it's... Maybe that's the whole thing. If the war is, like, stupid and it shouldn't have been fought in the first place, then there's no bad guys. They're just stupid guys. You know? So, World War One shouldn't have been fought in the first place. Therefore, no bad guys. I was looking at a set of rules the other day for, um, cause these guys, the, these guys that have been posting these crazy, really extremely attractive pictures of galleys and stuff like that. And, um, so I was looking for rules for, you know, 
I, I'm not going to get into them, but I do like to like, okay, well, if I, let's say I got them and they were painted, what rules would I use? So I watched a couple of videos on, on, uh, on, on some rules and realized, oh, they, these are pretty inexpensive. Oh, and I can get them from Amazon and like, you know, really soon. But I'm like, I looked at some of the reviews and I'm like, I'm already bored of the game and haven't even played it. Just doesn't seem very exciting. Napoleon fought to overthrow monarchies in Europe, which is a progressive early 19th century revolution. Hi, Tony. So what you're saying is progressive isn't always bad. <laughs> I think of it as a bad word, but I definitely I definitely believe in meritocracy. No doubt about it, you know. Shouldn't be like, you know, I'm a pompous ass, so I'm going to be in charge. That doesn't really work. So I, I can get behind that. My engineers are fat with beer bellies. <laughs> oh... Yeah, I definitely believe in meritocracy. Definitely. And you guys going to Historicon? I mean, I know you guys are across the pond, aren't? I have a hard time getting excited about something that just is so far away. You know, there's, there's so there's so much stuff. I don't mean painting. I, I mean, you know, like work related stuff and things I have to pack that I have a hard time getting excited about something that's that far away from me. All right, faces are done. Um, we'll wait and do the beards after we do the shields. Let's do one shield. Who's our guinea pig going to be? This guy right here. Um, that crow through the middle of the shield. I don't know. I may have to rethink that. It doesn't even look right to me in that in that beautiful artwork that that person did at the top of the corner. Let's see. Let's see. Do I have another example? Well, here's another one that I like, but the problem is, is that they don't have any bosses on the shields. That has a white rim. I think that would probably work okay. Uh, what's this one look like again? Alright, I don't like the shape of that crow. So let me do something different. Let me let me go over to this artwork. Um, let me see if this is the one that we're going to want to go with. Let's go back one. What's this one here? Yeah, all these shields don't have bosses on them. And I could take them off, but... I 
Let's see, where is the other crow one that I see that has a better shape than that one? I could just do this. I just took two Norwegian to have to have one of those um, one of those crosses have the swirl. All right, we're gonna try this. Weren't crows bad luck? No clue. I have no idea. Maybe it was, don't screw with us or you'll get bad luck. All right, which red? You have three as a starter. Maybe we'll use scarlet because it's the brightest one. Let's do scarlet. I'll be at a fine art auction that weekend, so count me absent for Historicon. Fine art auction. You a seller or a buyer? Only time I've been to auctions is uh, when we go on cruises. There's always artwork there. And I'll be honest with you. I don't care for most of it. Um, as a semi-artist, semi-artist, I think the people that... that paint things, you know, for real are a lot more talented than us that are just kind of doing paint by numbers. But still, um, there's a lot of stuff I don't, I don't really care for. And then there's stuff that's just brutally amazing. So. Okay, you, sir, are going to be the guinea pig. Guineas Pigius. I don't even like the idea of an auction on eBay. I'll snipe or I won't get it. I'm not interested about price. I just don't want to think it's mine, it's mine, it's mine, it's mine for a week. And then in the last 30 seconds, somebody took it away from me. I'd rather not get the idea that it's mine to begin with. You know, I don't necessarily need... A great deal on it or something. You know. Okay, so we've got a crow with a head looking backwards. I'm not sure that crow's going to cut it. It looks kind of weird. Buyer. Scarlet was my first girlfriend in 68... We went to see We went to see I don't know what the hell all that you're yeah, I don't know what you're saying. I got the buyer part, you lost me and everything else. Went to see GWTW. I don't know what GWTW is. I probably do once you tell me what GWTW is. It's GWTW, dude. Oh, I could do a cop-out. Well, let's try this before we do a cop-out. All right, I already have a backup plan. I already have a backup plan. Um, is all the crows have the head backwards? No. All right, let's just, let's just roll with it. Let's roll with it and... Gone with the Wind. Okay, you know, I've never seen that movie. I haven't avoided it. I've just never seen that movie. Okay, let's get black and start thinning it down because we're going to need to go really thin to kind of... And 
And that's not a movie that I would technically avoid because it's in black and white because it isn't. All right. We've got the tail that comes down here. And then we've got a body that comes up and around. Okay. And then we got the rest of the body that goes around here. Okay. And then we've got And I think the critical thing is the claw. I think the claw on the crow is All right. Now let's fill it up with red and see how that looks cuz I honestly I didn't bring the red up far enough. Because I can barely see the contrast myself. One thing I've noticed that that's, I've, I've been doing recently and it's helped me to kind of get the paint around the items on the shield that I needed to is just kind of use like a wet stipple. So like water down the paint a little bit and then just kind of pop up and down instead of trying to get around something and not, and not get there. Now honestly... It's going to be hard to tell without putting the without putting the um, the boss on there, but it looks like I'm on the right track. Painting scarlet over, I do it all the time. Yeah, I, I paint so thin, I add so many coats that it's not really a problem with the. coverage. It was so alien to paint a shield white and then put those decals for Little Big Man Studios on there. It was like really, really weird. Damn. Is starting to look really good. I don't know if it's in focus. All right, what color is the eye? Almost the same color, right? All right, I need to be careful. Let's go ahead and do the the boss now. And this is actually the most enjoyable part. And the fact that other people don't find it enjoyable makes it even more enjoyable. Uh, we're going to have to put more of this shit down.
And if I feel this is going to be really hard to replicate, then I may do a different pattern on each guy. Still with a red and black theme. It's more of a kind of replicate it with the damn boss being in the middle of it all. That's really the problem. Because again, I'm assuming that the shields are, are similar. Sometimes one shield's a little bit more oblong than the other. The boss isn't maybe perfectly in the center. All those little hiccups that could happen. What happened to the transom? Huh. I guess maybe it's just just overcast enough. And if it looks like an eagle instead of a crow, that works too. It could be other one of those. They have guys with eagles on them. Specifically, do not want to use yellow to lighten the sun up. I think I'm going to make them all different in the same style. Of course, don't even look at the colors. They're not gonna, you're not gonna see the right colors. A crow's a malnourished eagle. Could be. Could be. All right, we gotta do something better than that. Now, let me find.
I am pretty effing happy with that. And I haven't even done the rim yet. Hot damn. And I don't think I could get them to look close to each other with dodging that that um that boss. So we're not gonna do that. When I, this is all crit croc. What happened here? All right, what color is the rim here? Nah, we're not doing that. It's going to be white. It's going to be white. Let's finish this one all the way. And then we'll do the other shields. Yep, it just takes patience. And it'll look better when it's sealed. I don't know what the hell happens with the sealing. It's really freaking amazing. It's it's magic, witchcraft, something. And then we'll do this guy's beard, too. But that little stippling thing I did, I've had to start doing that because it, this is, some designs are really complicated, and that's really worked well for me. I've been really happy with the results. But you got to use the this this thinner to get the consistency right. I don't know. I just kind of almost do it without even thinking about it. I got to remember that these guys didn't win very many battles. So I got to go in with that mentality and like these guys get their ass beat. Hey, they did it exactly like they did historically. I hate that eight bow stand though. I've always uh, had to play keep away with that thing. That first kill of a double stand like that counts as two. So if that guy dies, you only have to kill three of me. I've mastered the art and science of 15 millimeter painting. Yeah, and there's still people that cannot paint the shit out of me. But that's good. That keeps me on my toes. This is the part I enjoy more than anything else. I feel like a lot of the stuff, choosing the palette, choosing what figures you want to use on each in each army, not just like, well, that's the figures that they put in the Essex army pack. I guess I'll paint those. F that. I want to decide who's in my damn army. And I've seen other people do videos of stuff that I like better than mine. And they take forever, too. The secret isn't, you know, I'm not going to be happy, you know, doing some dip or something like that. I got, I've got to just paint more often. That's the only way I can get more done and still be happy with the results. Because if I'm not happy with the results, I'm out of here. See, I was kind of wishy-washy on what color I was going to do his clothing. So I wanted to go do, do the shield because the shield isn't going to affect the color of the clothing. It's not. I don't want it to work the other way around. The shield is the dominant thing. I knew it was going to be black and 
black and white, um, black and red, black and red. And you got that damn bosses in the way that I'm, I'm definitely limited by whatever could possibly go with that. All right. But this guy's wearing boots and so forth. I got to take a potty break. I'll be right back. Trying to replicate the artwork in Osprey books is for the crows. I really liked Angus McBride's work. A lot. We're going to... I think we're going to finish this guy all the way. Let's just finish this guy all the way and just see what he looks like. All right. We need a beard that's not freaking black. Let's make this guy blonde. Let there be blonde. Oh, blondie. All right, where is the color I like to use for that? Uh, I'm not seeing it. Is it this one and just looks weird? Figures are sealed. Okay, okay, Dirk. Hopefully, we'll have some good stuff to show you. Where is the yellow? It's a little. I see this one. That wasn't the one I was looking for. Not deep yellow. Not regular yellow. All right. Well, it's time to put all this shit away. So I'm going to take... Uh... Good morning, Jeremy. I'm going to take a moment to put some of this stuff away. Because it's... Out of freaking control. Out of freaking control. Chaos is my enemy. I know some of you guys thrive on it. Maybe not some of you people. I know some people thrive on it. I can't stand it. I, I get pulled off in different directions. And I don't have any easy. But I don't want to get it either. Lots of browns. You know, worst case scenario, I don't think it's likely. All right, so where's that yellow one missing? Is it maybe this bastard upside down? No, that's deep yellow. It's one that's called golden yellow, and it's not golden at all. Here it is. Golden yellow. This candy-ass looking color. That's the problem with this paint setup I have. Is one of these paints turns sideways and knocks them all down. Alright, this is the color we were looking for. Yeah, it was like empty on the bottom, and I couldn't see it. I do not store my paints upside down. I store them. I store them like so. 
so that I can see the color. That's the, so I can just grab, easily grab a color. So that's how I store them. The problem is I haven't, really? The problem is I haven't used this color in a long time. I used to store them up. I actually used to have the little tops of them painted. That didn't work very well. And that was an exercise in futility. But I like seeing the bottoms of them because I can quickly grab what colors go with it instead of searching forever and ever and ever. All right. I know there's a mixing ball in here, but some of these colors are, you could see this one's older than dirt. This one's probably almost 20 years old. We don't need a whole lot of it. And I don't care if it's watery. I don't care if it's watery. All right. So this brown should work fine for the beard. Let's bring it back. Let's bring it back to life. The color Necromancer. And let's add a little bit of black. All right, we're going to paint all of his beard in that color. I guess this was the time if you were a man, you wore a beard. Ye with no beard need, on, need not apply in this army. So I'm going to make it a point that none of these guys, the Varangian guards, are going to have black beards because everybody else basically does. So we're actually going to go I don't, make a point of not doing that. And I'm going to actually make a point of grabbing some more of this color, hopefully from somewhere that has some substance to it. It isn't totally watered down. We don't need very much of it. Blonde hair on minis is difficult to paint. Yeah, just another step. It's less is more. You got to use some darker colors so it stands out from the flesh. If the yellow color is right up against the flesh, it's going to all be one big mass and you won't be able to distinguish the the blonde beard from the face which you know is actually okay in some people i mean you go out in the real world and you see that but you know it's not what you want There's not enough contrast there not enough contrast okay that's done. I feel like his shirt should be light blue. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Even my female dog has a gray beard. Miniature schnauzer. Why don't you just call it what it is? Your bitch. <laughs> Your bitch has a great beard. <laughs> bitch, go make me a sandwich. I mean, uh, I'm talking about the dog. Yeah, yeah, yeah.
I had a lot of bad, ex not bad experiences. It sounds like they, I got attacked by them, but I, I've had bad experiences with dogs growing up. I don't really care for them. I have, the problem is, is they're misbehaved. I, I don't have any pets. Uh, I can't imagine having pet hair in here as well. Um, but I appreciate dogs probably more now than I ever have. Um, although I don't ever see myself having one. Um, but if they realize where they fit in the whole totem pole, you know, that they realize, hey, they're, you're, you know, you're the freaking dog, you know. Um, it might be too bright. It might be too bright. We're going to do the pants white. All right, let's, let's, let's roll with it. If not, I can paint my way out. Um, more than ever, I, I, I appreciate them. But I've also been, I've seen a lot of dogs that are behaved well. That, you know, don't jump all over. The whole thing is just jumping on you. I'm fine with them smelling you and shit, but I don't like j dogs jumping on me, especially when you're ignoring them. You know, if you're like winding a dog up, sure, but I don't want a dog freaking jumping on me. Um... But I like them more than I probably ever have. I don't really fact. I don't really like the fact that they, they have a smell to them, um, and that's just how they are. I mean, that's just genetically their their thing. So I'm not used to that. Just like I'm not used to hobby things smelling. Um, I'm not used to using paints that have a much of a smell to them. So, I'm not a dog person, but I appreciate dogs. And cats just don't give a shit about you. So, I'm definitely not a cat person. But I never really grew up with pets, so I don't... Um, I don't really have a thing for them. But I am looking forward to another army where I can put a dog on the stand with a general. Although the Odago performed poorly the other night. Just couldn't survive rolling that many ones. All right, we'll go with that. And I don't want red pants. It's gonna detract from the red on the shield. I want that to really stand out. So I'm gonna do um, some kind of an off-white or whatever on, on these pants. And then we're gonna use you know, brownish type boots, what have you. How long have I been on here? Three and a half hours? It's just t this just takes a while. It just does. There's just no other way around it. This is the old white. I really should see what's in here. If not, I'm going to throw this away. 
I've got several whites that are No, we still got white paint in here. Okay. That'll work. You have an Irish wolfhound with my Viking command stand. Way too cool. Yep, that's what's on my Irish one. And he was, he definitely didn't, um, he didn't perform. He didn't perform, unfortunately. And I made all the barking sounds too when I rolled the dice and went into combat. It didn't help. Oh, well. Still love him. Still love them. You know, and there's other armies that have dogs in them, and they're treated as warband, and they're not included in the DBA army list. So, F it, I don't give a shit. We're going to do scenarios, and they might be in a scenario, and I'll build a, you know, unit of war dogs. Lydians have them, Paeonians have them. You know. DBMM has all kinds of cool stuff that's not included in uh, DBA for whatever reason. Flaming oxen and shit like that. You know, not to use it in a tournament, but if we're playing a scenario. All those units that are like bowling for people, side chariots and things like that, things that behave like side chariots. Like that stuff. All right, we got the pants done. Boots. Before I decide to do a dark brown, I'm not doing red like that guy. That guy's, you're not special enough to have red boots. You're not special enough to have red boots. I'm going to use like the same color that they had um, that the riders are on. This khaki color. I think it. I think it looks good down there. Saddle Brown. Saddle Brown might not be bad either. Let's do that. Let's do Saddle Brown. Well, that's really the color of the sword. 
All right, let's do the sword. None of it's really that important. Just a contrast situation. I'll break that. Snack time. These leftover little bags from daughter's birthday party several months ago. I haven't touched any of them. I'm like, ah, F it. Let me just put something in my mouth quick. I'm getting pretty hungry. So we got the boots, the sheath, add none oil, not none oil. That's different. Sounds like a contraceptive, <laughs> a contraceptive slash lubricant, none oil. Use sparingly. Really looking forward to doing the flag. The flag's just going to be a simple cross with the little round things in the corner. And probably either going to be dark blue field or a purple field. Probably dark blue because the emperor, his entire horse covering is purple. So if I make the flag purple, it takes away from the uniqueness that the coverings on the horse is. I mean, really dark blue. With a gold cross. You know, with the little round things in the corner. Byzantine style. And we're going to do the same on the back of the horse. So it's going to be a purple cloth, cloth. And on the back quarter panels of the horse, we'll have that same cross. Obviously, it'll be on a purple background. And the front will have a little key row on both sides to fill up that space. The Emperor's all kinds of colors that don't match. Light blue cape. Red boots.
peacock feathers on top of his helmet. Do that last because that's going to be hard to pull off. And we'll do that after everything else is mastered. Probably golden armor. So he's got scale. No reason he can't have scale golden armor. Anyhow, cool stuff. That'll be the last guy painted. Make sure I do not have any messages. That's some interesting icons. What's this? Nothing. 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 Okay, perfect. So I got some ideas of how things are gonna I are plan planned out, but other than that, you know, what color boots I'm gonna do on this guy, not really that critical. You know. I just know that if I'm gonna put something reddish, I don't want something reddish next to something else that's already reddish. It just kind of takes away the the power of it. And that's the kind of shit you just have to figure out from painting. And what what spin you want to put on stuff. So I'm not even going to bother to stop what I'm doing right now and spray paint and spray the, these other figures that are ready to go. I've got six figures to spray, which is one Cav stand and the other com Cav commander. There's no point in doing that now. Um, we'll do that hopefully tomorrow morning or tomorrow afternoon or something like that. It's going to be down to the wire, but these guys will look good when we're done. Just don't want to be like, man, I wish I would have taken a little bit more time to do them. I'm going to have to stop and take a break at some point only because of positioning. Because no matter how you have this, you're going to still be hunched over a little bit. I kind of keep it to like a minimum because of the height of this table, but still. You know, take off like an hour or something like that. Let's see what the hell's going on on his um, his armor here. That goes to there. Wow, it's where is the leather brown? Don't make me pull more leather brown out, as I will. Leather Brown.
this is leather as well. Okay, man, you have a great day, too. We'll see you soon again. Thanks for hanging out, man. Touching up some stuff that I probably wouldn't need to touch up if I was painting them by the each. somebody I was going to call him about 10. I said about 10, so I'm still okay. All right, let's see if I can pull, let's see if I can get away with this. We're going to take a small intermission. We're going to disconnect the phone, make a phone call, and I will be right back in a matter of uh, 10 minutes or so. Okay, so as it says, be right back. Actually, let's disconnect, yeah, yeah, we should be good with that. Uh, be right back in a gif, folks.
Oh, that's an interesting picture of me. <laughs> well, let's see if we can get this. I need to do this from time to time so I, I get better at doing it. Although I think I pretty much got it down. So what we're going to do is let's hook up the phone back up. All right. Let's connect to the Wi-Fi. And with any luck, I won't have to relaunch that thing. Although I may have to. Let's launch this. Okay. And there it is. I don't even have to connect it. The computer was already connected. Yeah. So I'm good till about one. At one, I need to make a phone call and see if that's when I'm going to uh, take a break. Um, but anyhow, thanks for hanging out with me, folks. Much appreciated. You guys want to talk about something different than I'm already talking about? Let me know. And we can do that. All right. Where we got left with this clown? Ooh, I don't like his red boots. I just took a break from him. I don't like his red boots. I do not like his red boots. Let me get um, let me get these spear in from over here. Probably be okay. It's just not necessarily what I want. Let me take another look at it. We'll leave them alone. We'll leave them alone because they're they're going to be a lot. They're going to be a lot lighter colored than the boots on the emperor, who's going to have freaking red boots. All right, so we'll go with it. I just it just kind of startled me. I. I, had, I, I stepped away and hadn't looked at him in, in a few minutes and just like, what the, you know. All right, so we've got a uh, sword, a sword sheath. We're going to use the color that we've used on all the riders. No point in being creative at this point. Where is that particular color. That's beige brown. It is beige brown, okay? It's this one then. Yep. US Field Drab. A very, 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 very useful color. Let me do one other thing. I got a twinge of a headache. Let's, take, let's kill that right now. I need to do for this trip, but a lot of these things I can do while I'm waiting for um, either the goop to dry or the sealant or something like that. So I'm trying to be conscious and use that use that dead time smartly. So. It's extremely helpful that the wife is not here. Not because she's distracting, but then I'll, you know, I'll be like, man, I need to be spending some time with her. The fact that she's not here, I can't do that. And I'll be honest with you, when she would go on, she'd go by herself and do something. After a couple days, I love being by myself. But after a couple days, I'm like, okay, when are you coming back? Because, you know, you just feel like your kind of life is a waste. But I'll be honest with you, with doing these type of painting videos and having you guys hang out with me, 
I've done a really good job of like staying on task and getting a lot of things done. So I don't mind if she leaves because it's not like I'm just sitting in front of the television or playing video games or something like that. I'm doing productive things. And I specifically did yard work last weekend so I wouldn't have this weekend have to worry about doing it. So we can just focus on these, these guys. All right, and then we need to do a little bit of There's probably not going to be much late night painting tonight. You've been warned. It's unlikely I'm going to be able to do that. at the other end. Like the black wasn't where I was expecting it to be. I just put a little black here so it's easier to, to reach. forget to do the back of the shield which isn't the end of the world you can actually seal the figures and everything and then do the back of the shield it's in a spot where it's not going to get scuffed up by play you can't get your finger in there let's go ahead and null and oil it and then we know, we know that we've done everything on this guy and he's completely completely done. Four viewers and everything's silent. How many of you guys are like uh, Chinese spies? <laughs> All right. Ooh. There is a little bit of, of white around the edge of this shield that I missed. here so let's take care of that I'm 
Okay, we're calling this guy done. Four hours and I got one figure done? Yeah, I got lots of bits of these guys done. So, back to red. So there's a guy here that has a bull-like shield. Because I don't want to really try to, I don't really want to try to do that crow thing on everybody. Uh, we'll do a, a, a raven type thing on another guy. We'll do, um, this guy we're going to go with a bull. Now, I'm going to pick the same pose as this other guy. So that way I don't have... A bird type thing on two guys that are exactly the same pose. That would be annoying. And it looks like all of the bull is going to be behind, underneath where the um, where the boss is. And I'm looking at a shield I'm trying to replicate, but that doesn't have a boss. Let's um, let's go ahead and save this, save image, put it here, okay. Let's minimize this. Let's come over here and go properties and browse. This is the picture in question. This is Angus McBride's artwork, but you notice all these shields for these Varangian guards, none of them have a boss on them, which is a problem because it can really interfere with the design. Now, you see there in the center of the screen, there's a shield there that has a bull's head. So that's what we're going to attempt to do now. The problem is, is where the hell do you put the boss in it? Um, so I think we're going to put the boss like it's sitting on top of the bull's head, so to speak. So that's at least my attempt to do it. If I don't like how it turns out, then we'll paint something else in its place. But I want the black red motif on all of the, all of the shields. So. We're going to not use this one that's that detailed. Use this one. Here is the red color that we used as the base. take a look at that later that guy's some this is some amazing work even though i'm really happy with the stuff that i do i sometimes come across somebody it's like holy shit that guy's amazing hey doug Good morning. Have a co-worker visiting Clearwater Beach. You know, a guy that knows a guy that's three hours away from me. <laughs> Clearwater Beach is actually really nice. Um, it's about three hours, maybe a little short of three hours, depending on the traffic.
That area is about where that coast starts getting nice. Maybe a few miles north of there. Because north of that is just freaking swamp. It is just swamp. All right. Bull's head. You store your paints upside down. Uh, I would do that, but then I can't see them. I need. I want them out there where I can pick colors between them. So I split the difference sideways. Otherwise, I would do them upside down. I actually did when I had them in a. I had them like in a uh, like a, one of those clear Plano boxes. But then I just got too many paints. All right, so we need to do a bowl down here, and he is a horny bastard. He's got long horns. All right, so let's do. Let's get some black here. This may not work. This may not work just because of the shape of it. Like I said, that shield does not have a boss on it. With the advantages of painting really thin. I'll be able to code it, cover it and not be able to... Lose much detail. Okay, I think that'll work. Little ears extend from that, okay. I think I need to do the, the horns first. Great horny toad. Okay, and there's a space between the ears and the horns. Got it. Do I use washes? No. Other than the null oil on the uh, on the metal to darken it and then lighten up, I don't I don't wash at all on the figures. I find it too uncontrollable. I'm too much of a control freak. I used to when I used to do naval miniatures, but that was a long time ago. I'm not a fan of them. Okay, you guys can't tell, but I think I got the symbol about right. So we're going to come in with a red and, um, and brighten that up. Is the face long enough? I didn't think it would be a little bit longer. But we need enough space to put some of the red meat behind it, below it. And when I red meat, I mean the, some of the red color there. He's got two little red eyes. I guess that's the thing is they all have red eyes on all these symbols. So let's come in here. This is where we started off with. Let's add a little bit more of this and shade around this. Yeah, I used to use washes in the 90s. Never did washes with figures. I always did washes with like equipment and stuff. When I started painting the figures in around 96, never did washes. I suspect I probably saw something 
And a red, and a red, what do I call it? What do I call it? Red Dwarf. I've never even watched Red Dwarf. White Dwarf magazine. And, um, and kind of extrapolated this kind of layering thing. There's a piece of fluff on the end of this brush. Man, there's some loud vehicles out on that road. Get a muffler, dude. What keeps me going is um, is painting my stuff to the standard of the, <clears throat> of the other things that I see online, and and those guys don't use washes either. So um, I can see how they're useful. I can see how they're a lot better than they used to be. I mean, hell, when I did them, we just freaking did water and paint. That's it. We didn't use anything else. We didn't put a little bit of dish soap. None of that. And they turned out okay, but. You know, I got rid of all my ships because I didn't like how they looked anymore. You know? So if I'm going to paint, I want my stuff to look like the the painting gods that I see. And um, it's a lot of work. It's not quick. It's more not quick than a lot of work, I should say. Because this isn't, none of, I don't think anything, any of this is difficult. It just takes time. And do it enough that you realize when, it's, when something's going south. And that just, just just experience you've done something it's like no if i keep going down this road it's not going to turn out how i thought, think it's going to you know kind of predict how the end result is going to look like before you get there and it's too late i'm almost to the point where i'm going to have to switch this thing and a matter of fact i may do that really soon
Now, where are the eyes in the whole? Okay, even with the opening of the ears ish. Okay. give you an idea what this is looking like. They do look darker. Yeah, you got a highlight and you also don't know what kind of painting light they're, play they're playing in. I get accused all the time of my figures looking very dark and I accuse them back as you're playing in shitty lighting conditions. So fortunately, they can, our local convention, and this is going, by the way, this is, this is outstate, it's welcome. What's happening is, is there's a lot of dust that float, that's floating around everywhere, and, um, and it's picking up some of those particles, and then I'm having to get them off the brush. All right, so we're going to leave our modern art piece there. Let's wet this some more, and we'll throw a new one on there. Actually, I didn't realize how much dust was, and, and I don't really live in a dusty pool, but there's just there's dust all around us, you know, and I've got a ceiling fan going, and I'm not changing that. I am a big fan of the fan. I'm a big fan of the fan. Let's see where the open one is. organized as most of you are I still misplace shit so I can't imagine being more disorganized I'd go freaking mad um, hmm. what the hell could it be I guess I could open the other one that'll guarantee it shows up I don't know where the F it is time for that. Maybe it's the same one. I just sealed the bottom and I think there's a different one. All right. The one with the symbols goes down. stuff is weird it's weird it's slippery it's like the slippery side of your poster board all right where's my uh my card hmm. this 
good call. I was looking for this the other day. And you guys going to Historicon? No? Nobody? We'll see you there then. I wish I was just going to hang out. I don't even, I don't even care about playing, not honestly. I play enough. Oh, this came out shittily. Not even on this side. Like handling a snake. Yeah. The other one didn't give me as much trouble. Actually, the Mark I version doesn't give me any trouble at all. I think that this one actually overhangs the side, and it's kind of weird. All right. You wish you were. Yes, you were going to Historicon. Well, you're not missing anything. Just something to do. The problem with Historicon is if I didn't play DBA. I probably wouldn't go because the whole system of you can't get a ticket until the day of and you don't know who's running the game or what it looks like. That's just a just like a big dice dice roll to see, you know, maybe you're stuck in a game that looks like shit for like six hours. I don't know. I know that I'm going to stay busy the whole time. You know, I'm, I'm going to be one thing after another. Now, we did make it, so we have an hour and a half between games. So that's one thing that our Florida Con doesn't do is our Florida Con forces you to have sessions that, that are fixed at certain times. So there's one session that runs from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. That's it. You can't go at a different time. You can't start at 10 and run to 2. It's 9 to 1. Um And um, so what happens is, is that you have a very small break between the first and second session for lunch and a big gap between um, the last session. You have a two hour gap between the last session, the, between the next to last session and the last one. So it's like a six to eight. You got a two hour gap there. Well, if you do the same thing in Historicon, all the vendors close at six. So you're giving people a lot of space and they can't shop during that time. So I said, F it, we're shoppers too. And at Historicon, you can change the schedule however you want. So you start, you go 9 to 1, and then 1 to 2.30. Uh, 1 to 2.30 is your gap. So you got an hour and a half in between those sessions to shop. Because otherwise, um, you know, you don't give people enough time between the first and second session. And between the second and third, the vendor hall is closed. So. Is there anybody live streaming from there? I don't know. I'm going to try to take some videos, and I don't mean of our games, but just in general. I don't know how successful I'm going to be. I've got a, um, a gimbal that um, I was given to for my last phone, and it doesn't work really well on this one because this one's too fat. Or it doesn't work with this case. So I don't know if I'm going to go down that hole, but I, I, won't, I don't think I'll be live because I don't know what the service is going to be like and you know you could have dickheads behind you saying things like dickhead <laughs> you know so i don't know that i don't know that i would do live but um 
I'm going to try to take some footage and maybe do a little montage, but I don't have a whole lot of time to do that in between games and shops, so I'm not going to make any promises. Um, I'm not going to make any promises because I don't like to promise things and not deliver. And, you know, part of me wishes there wasn't so much to do. I almost wish like we had a morning session and an afternoon se and an evening session and nothing in between. But the other problem is you could encounter a game you really want to play and it's a, one of the sessions that you're running stuff in. So we'll see. More than likely, if I do film something, it's not going to um, have audio from there because it's just going to get distorted and shit. When is the Florida Con? So we have two every year. They're in the last weekend of April and the last weekend in September every year or every year that they had them. So we didn't have them for a couple years and then they're, they were back. So around the 20 something. And it's a Friday, Saturday, Sunday. It's really half a day Sunday, but it's it's all day Friday, all day Saturday, and and the first half of the day Sunday, which is really, really, really low key. Meaning there may not be much at all. So you don't want to do one of those. I'll stop by Sunday and check it out. You you don't bother, you know. And it's in Orlando. It's. It's considered Kissimmee, but it's 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 Orlando. It's on the outskirts of um, of Disney property, basically. And we get I don't know a couple hundred people that go to it. It's not huge. There's enough going on, but. So it's two different cons. One's called Recon, one's called Huracan. Don't make don't make it sound like it's two different things because it's not. It's the same show two twice a year, you know. It's the same people go to them, same vendors, same location, same people running both. It's just twice a year. This is where we're gonna put Metal Corner. But it's tiny compared to Historicon. You know, Historicon's the only East show that I go to because we're driving like 15 hours one way. And um, so if you're driving 15 hours one way, the longer time you spend there, the less of your trip is really driving time. Well, this is drying up. This is crinkling up quick. I just want to see how this stuff behaves. I like that. I like this version too, palette much better. I like it much better. All right, let's get um, let's get the shield edging going. So the big drag for me isn't the long drive; it's the it's just taking the time off of work. It's just a massive pain to take any time of, off of work. You come back and I got to leave everything done. I come back and they've just run the place into the damn ground. I got to fix everything. So
but I don't I don't see the attraction of going and playing games blindly saying hey this looks good on paper and then you get there and everybody playing a game is a dickhead or as what is more likely to happen they're not having any fun playing the game and by god we have fun we have a lot of fun playing games And I mean, that's the whole point. It's like going on a bad date. <laughs> Would you record a podcast with Mitch on the way back and then put that audio over any footage you get or just upload the audio as a podcast somewhere? Um, yeah, we could do that. Uh, upload it over footage. I've never done that before, and I'm really a noob at it. Um, yeah, I could definitely record. Um, you know what? I know what we're going to do, and it's really easy to do. I, I can't guarantee it'll be live because you don't want it at shitty quality. Instead of posting the results daily, which is a pain in the ass to do, um, that takes forever with pictures, we're still obviously going to record the results and and take pictures of the events, but I'm not going to do that until I'm back home. Um, we will do a podcast uh, at the end of every evening um, about uh, what the events were, what the results were, and um, what the experience was. We'll do that. We'll do that. That's easy enough to do. Um, because the thing is, is it's putting out a video that's like 10 minutes long is a piece of cake. Putting out something that's like three or four hours is, is a massive undertaking. Yeah, we'll do that. He's definitely going to be game for that. And we'll make sure he wears shoes and out in public. Definitely. That's easy enough to do. Even videos up to 30 minutes long, it won't take 30 minutes. Even a video of 30 minutes long is easy to do. You start getting into an hour or two. It takes a lot of processing time. It takes forever to upload it. YouTube takes forever to process it so you guys can see it. Um, and I've done enough of those on the go. I don't know how to do talking over, um, the video, but, um, yeah. And I don't know how much time I'm going to have to actually like go and like, you know, do, you know, do the overall thing. I don't, I don't know. I'm going to be really like pressed for time, I think. But we can definitely do a video at the end of every evening on the drive up. You know, yeah. That's a good plan. We'll have to find somewhere relatively close, um, quiet because of all the background noise. So here's the two shields. The other guy's not done with a bull, but oh man, come on. What am I looking at? It's so awkward to try to move one guy and you gotta you gotta move the opposite of what you see. It's so freaking awkward. And we need to touch up the black, we need to put a little bit of highlighting on it, but that worked that looks okay. You know, considering I gotta deal with a I gotta deal with the um, that boss in a way. And the lighting is just you're fighting all this yeah, no, it's not enough light. It just set up the wrong way for that.
Yeah, we'll definitely shoot. We'll definitely shoot some videos. I don't want to do it live because it's gonna be it's gonna be in seven twenty p. It's gonna be shit shit quality because of what it's limited to on a mobile feed. And um, but we definitely record it, upload it. That same day that it happens. No point in uploading it a different day, but it's gonna be late. It'll probably probably end up doing that after midnight. But that's a pretty simple video. They look ace, or as my grand grandmother used to say, top banana. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Top banana. What's the opposite of top banana? Bottom peach? Top banana. I don't know that any of my grandmothers had any sayings. They wouldn't be in English. Neither one of them spoke much English, if at all. A veteran warrior there, yeah. Better be. We're paying this guy big money to perform. Just wait till you see the emperor. And the guy with the bugler. The bugler. Bugle boy. Whatever happened to Bugle Boy? Not that I have any other pants, but I remember. I didn't get to wear trendy stuff when I was a kid. We weren't poor, but I didn't have fancy clothes. No, we know what colors need to paint this guy. I love the shield stuff though. Can't get enough of it. You saw a six millimeter convention on YouTube the other day. Is that that joy of six? And I didn't realize that, that was just all six mil. I saw something about, who was it? Little Wars posted about Joy of Six. And I just haven't gotten a chance to watch it. Their videos are like of an extremely good quality. I don't, I don't have the time or inclination to make vi my videos look that nice. That's just going to be like, okay, well, I can't get any painting done because I'm popping out videos. That's just, that's not what I'm all about. I'm, uh, this is a, the videos are just a side gig for me. I remember one time there's a lot of like free music and stuff you can get, but it takes some time finding it. I, I was I was making some video and I was trying to find the perfect song that would go with or the perfect tune that would go with, I don't know, Ottomans and somebody or another. And the next thing I know, um, I'm spending I've gone three hours just surfing for this just to put one video out I'm like I don't have time for this you know that's painting I'm not getting done and I need to get painting done so I can stay sane and bring more uh, matchups to you guys and and for us too you know you know we're doing stuff that we like too not just like well I hate doing this but that's what people want uh, it's it's not one of those things when this stops being fun then um, we're not going to do it anymore yeah little wars and storm of steel were involved with it okay cool we'll have to check it out
Yeah, the Little Wars quality. I mean, I've edited videos. They're spending a lot of time editing those videos. A lot. A lot, a lot of time. I just have no inclination to do that. I don't even search for, you know, my, my video editor on my phone has lots of free music. It's not perfect, but it, it gets the job done. You know, maybe if I lived alone and didn't work, I could spend more time on the videos, but sometimes it's just, just, let's just get it out of here to see what we're up to, what kind of crazy stuff happens, you know. You know how I say I don't do washes? That's my equivalent of using washes in videos. <laughs> There's not time for everything. I would do six millimeter except that, well, I mentioned it earlier today. I just don't think there's enough troop variety and I don't want to do the little, the gooping in between figures I think would be extremely fiddly. But when you step back and look at it, it looks great. And there's a lot of people that are coming out with, um, that are coming out with this uh, two millimeter and three millimeter, like these formations that like you have a stand that's like a Roman legion and they're already in like these little mini formations. Or, 3D printing and stuff like that. That stuff looks really cool too. But um, we're too far along down this road to go into that. Yeah, I saw that video come up on my, um, I just haven't, I think it came up yesterday. I just haven't sat down and watched anything. I recognize Storm of Steel, but I don't think I'm, I'm subscribed to their channel, so we'll have to see. The problem with a lot of those edited videos, though, sometimes you don't get a good idea of what the people are like because you don't know how much of it is uh, edited or whatever. I don't bother editing our stuff. You meet me. I'm the same person I am on the video. You know, I don't need to hide anything. I'm not unproud of who I am. I'm just, I'm, I'm, what, I'm what I is, you know, and um, it's too much effort to edit stuff. You know, that's why I've always hated reality shows. Because reality shows should be a hidden camera on a freaking island. And we only come and pick up one person. So if there's two of you left, we'll shoot both of you. <laughs> Survivor. <laughs> there better only be one person left. <laughs> so ever since the first reality show, I never watched it. Because they're edited and, you know, not my cup of tea. Wrestling. I don't want to see wrestling. It's all figured out. Prearranged. Yeah, there's a guy who plays two mil figures. Great videos, but he might as well use counters. Also, they don't look great. Is he having fun while playing? So a lot of people don't have fun. We have a shitload of fun. We have a shitload of fun. In case you couldn't tell. But that's why I would want to play a game blind because there's a lot of gamers that I just don't want to game with. They're just, they're no fun. Or they gripe when they win. I'm like, who the hell gripes when they win?
just strange, you know. The kind of people that if you give them a million dollars, they'd bitch because the dollars weren't all fi- a suitcase full of money. They wouldn't. They'd bitch because the, the suitcase wasn't all facing the same way. The the packs of bills in there. I'm like, come on, man. I don't want to be around people like that. Not when it's my hobby. I'm volunteering to do this. Joy of War Gaming. Yeah. I've seen some some of those things in formations that look really cool. But I'm extremely affected. My interest in something is extremely affected by what it looks like. Like, there's this guy that puts out stuff for galleons and stuff. It's with that League of Augsburg. And their sailing ships are salivatingly good looking. It, it is just, I'm in freaking awe. And, um, and the post that he does on this stuff is just really amazing. And that's not really a period that I'm interested in. It doesn't matter. It doesn't really matter. I'm not sure why Joy of War... It's hard to keep up with everybody. Everybody has... There's lots of stuff out there. There's lots of stuff out there. I better I better write those things down. Or I'm not going to remember to check them out. So let me get my scrap piece of paper here. Well, this is the second card that I had. I pulled out one. I got another one. This is just oh, this is just notes. Okay, so we're going to look at Joy of War Gaming. Uh, what's the six millimeter convention? Oh, we're going to look at Storm of Steel. Storm of Steel. Okay, and the other one, Joy of Six. So there's Joy of War Game and there's Joy of Six. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to have to take a break at some point. So I'll check those things out when I'm doing that. When I'm taking my break. I'm on break. Matter of fact, I'm probably going to take a break when I'm done with this guy. That's probably what I'm going to do. Because I've been on here, what, five hours? Damn near. Well, this is what I'm supposed to be doing, though. This is my homework assignment. I'm going to have to take a break for food. I'm meeting some people for food. And then we'll be on for a little bit before we hit the movie night stuff. See, we'll watch a couple more Bond films. We've got to work our way through, and we're still towards the very beginning. We just saw the last one we watched was uh, Goldfinger, so it's, I guess, Thunderball tonight. I'm going to watch them all in order. I was talking about that earlier. I've seen them all except three. I think three. But um, watching them with the fam. And and hopefully not too late so I don't fall asleep. I tend to not do really well with um, with late movies, especially if they're slow ish.
little bit of this here. for the boots this saddle brown oh. But I learned a valuable lesson the other day. Do not play the Irish without having whiskey. Uh, they did not. They did not roll very well. That's what we're going to. Um, we're going to blame it on that. And those poor bastards went from an eight and two record to eight and six. Lost all four games, and they weren't even close games. I just got devastated. I think one of them was like five G to two. Just got spanked. Maybe I'm just trying to save my luck for Historicon. I'd just show up, not even bring this army. Oh, can't give him a, can't give him a dirty, uh, dirty record, you know. You're familiar with the rules he uses, so you're a subs so I'm a subscriber. Oh, the joy of wargaming. Have any of you guys tried uh, Age of Hannibal? Is it cool? I don't want to get into something that's only specific to ancients, you know. I, I like the fact that these go through 1500. Because it's not like I'm not interested in medieval stuff. I'm interested in all of it. Okay, what else you got left on this guy? A beard, the color of the beard, and let's do the black on the, on the bull before I forget. I could see forgetting that. Okay, and the beard, we'll make this guy brown, but not too light. Saga, Age of Hannibal. No, uh, Age of Hannibal is the rules that um, Little Wars put out. And it's a DBA-esque DBA -esque type of game. Um, I guess they play that as six bill. I think that's what they do. This brown will work just fine for it. Oh, it's the same color as the leather. Mm, no. Need some contrast. Need more contrast than that.
think theirs uses a D10. I think Age of Hannibal uses a D10. I just love the pick. I love the pick mechanisms. Yeah, I guess it's can I size battles. It's not skirmish. Okay, then you do null null on this guy and he's done. And then we're going to take a break. Only because I want to stretch my back out. Although this is a pretty comfortable position, but I've been doing this for five freaking hours, so you know, there's that. And I probably have 15 more hours worth of painting, I'm guessing. But this is the right weekend for it. If I can't do it this weekend, I'm n I'd never be able to do it. And let's get the back of the shield. A word from our sponsor, yeah. Dome's pills. Is that what old people have for the when the back's hurting? Actually, I'm not very com I'm not dis uncomfortable at all, really. I just know that. Um, well, sometimes you just got to take a break. Now there's two. Half of the Varangian Guard guy's done. And now there shall be two. Anyhow. Another guy's going to have be an eagle, and I don't know what the fourth guy's going to be. What did it look like on the screen there? Yeah. Anyhow. All right, folks, thanks for stopping by. Uh, just over five hours on this one and uh, we'll see you guys soon don't forget to subscribe so you know when I come on if that's your cup of tea and